Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Wherever you are in the world, we are live from the RC with Adam studios and, uh, well, studio, I only have one. And today we are talking about Beta Flight because Beta Flight um, is, 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 is essential is essential to flying a quadcopter there are other configurators but beta flight is the most popular one and this is geared toward beginners so if you are brand new to the world of quadcopters and beta flight and that sort of thing and you're like i kind of don't even know what's going on well then this it will be talking about it uh hopefully um, um ground level up uh type of viewpoint um not really sure what i meant by that but Basically, if you have questions, ask them in the chat. And if you have questions, if you're watching this later on when it's not live, put those in the comments below. Um, speaking of the chat, let's see what's going on in the chat. I see some people here. Arnav Vlogs, how's it going? I believe you were the yeah you were the one that was asking for a beta flight walkthrough type of thing, and I'm glad you did because you brought to my attention um the that i was kind of starting to get a little behind in the beta flight stuff actually because now there's 4.2 but we'll talk about that in a second i see we have flacco 85 uh as as uh, wolves wolves i see you from india hello hello uh we got luca we got uh we got ozzy we've got who else we got we got matt and that's it right now so what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do if i can Let's see. Oh no! Wait a minute. Hang on. I mean, I gotta fix something for my stream health. Let me change something here. I might need to. Um, I might need to stop recording this one. Do I need to stop recording that, or do I just need to turn down the the latency? I don't know. It seems like it's working. Let me know if it's working, guys. Let me know if the if the, if it's getting too choppy. But we're not gonna be doing a ton of motion stuff. Speaking of motion stuff. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off our propellers on our quadcopter. Oh, and I should say, so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to be in uh, beta flight, uh, beta flight right here. We're going to be talking about beta flight, how to set up your uh, brand new flight controller in beta flight. We're going to be talking about um, basics, like generalities to some extent and on, look i'll be the first to tell you that <laughs> i am not a beta flight nerd so i don't really love uh like hanging out in beta flight i don't want to loiter there i want to like get in get what i need and then get back out like walmart or something you know what i'm saying uh so that um i'm not really the 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 best resource if you want like super in-depth like what is this little filter gyro notch thingy what does that do what's the difference between you know this and that then you know you go to the the, the beta flight wizard bardwell joshua bardwell for that sort of stuff but if you're like i didn't even know what uh, beta flight was a thing then i'm your guy so the first thing we're going to do is first thing we're going to do is um uh take off our propellers and i see somebody said that they see a lag between the audio and the video because you always want to take off your propellers and you get those lovely wrench sounds don't you just love those i do so we're going to take off our propellers and i realized maybe that's not the most exciting thing to watch live but i mean how often do you get to do that not very often um, also, I, um, yeah, as long as there's not too much of a lag between the audio and the video, I think we'll be okay. Um, because again, we're not, uh, we're not doing too much. Uh, I think, I think you'll be able to understand what I'm saying either by listening to me and then seeing the video, even if there's a little bit of a lag. So anyway, we're going to take off our propellers first because that's really important. And the reason why I have propellers on here, this is the budget basher, by the way. This is like, I mean, this is basically the only working five inch quadcopter that I have. So that's that's why you see it all, all the time. Um, and the reason why I have propellers on here is because I was flying it. I was flying actually earlier this morning. In fact, the footage that you saw at the beginning of this video is uh, what I got when I was flying it. And it's not, it's not the super most greatest, you know, 
cinematic type of footage although i did like that some of those uh some of those gaps were pretty cool um but uh but 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 it w it felt really good because it had i put beta pl beta flight 4.2 on here and um it, it does fly differently with the gopro mount but the 4.2 the beta flight 4.2 which i'm going to show you how to set up in just a second is um i think it's it is actually really good as people were saying because everybody's like oh beta flight 4.2 it's so crazy and if you're in the rc fpv uh world on youtube and stuff then you've seen a bunch of those videos probably and for me i just kind of ignored it because i was like well my quadcopter's still working so you know but then um i was like well Maybe I should, you know, should probably keep it up to date. And I think, I think it does fly better. But then again, I don't know if I'm just thinking that because of, because of all of the uh, kind of some some of the hype or just all of the people t talking about it, saying it's so great. So, um, okay, our motors are off of our quadcopter right now. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, oh, oh, one more thing, very important, one more important thing resources resources in the description of this video you will see resources um and some of them let me go to right here and some of them are um really important or at, le or at least very helpful i think so let me see if i can um let me see if i can drag this down I'll put this on the nope i can't hang on Urgh. technical things there we go let me do this and boom okay so this is this is a uh, we'll talk about what this is or what what this is for but this is a um basically a uh conversion thing for the rates in the new the new beta flight rates they call they're called actual rates so just want you to be aware of that um joshua bardwell's beta flight 4.2 series is really great this playlist on all these different things that i just don't care to go into as much detail so for specific things more in depth about beta flight 4.2 go check out that and that is where i got the link to this uh graph thing uh this conversion thing that we can use to convert our normal rates to the actual rates um but if like don't worry don't worry too much about it um also if you need to download and install beta flight configurator at all um that rhymed you need to check out this video this is um it's just it's just a good video of showing how to download and install the all new beta flight 4.2 and new uh 10.7.0 configurator because you do need to have that so i'm not going to go into that because i think it'd be better i mean the drain man fpv did a great job here showing how to do that but that is the first step that you need uh to do so the other thing is uh where can you get the beta flight configurator you can get it from right here which uh he does show in his video also and again links to all these things in the description down there on the video also uh i made this video most common problems for beta flight this should apply to even like the newer versions of beta flight but it was based on an older version as well as Betaflight explained for beginners. Um, and again, an, an older version, but if you want like a walkthrough, uh, kind of like we're gonna kind of like we're gonna do today, then that's really good. And then this is the flight controller that I'm using. I don't have links to this, but this just for reference, this is what's in my quadcopter, and that is what the board layout looks like. And we will probably uh visit that um as we go through here. So, okay, with all of that preamble um then uh kv thunder what's up dude he says props off or chops off that's right that's right props off or chops off even if you have i mean it's even a good idea even if you have that uh smoke stopper from v fly the short saver i keep wanting to call it the short stopper but anyway i had a video about that and it involved smoke so you should check out that video um all right okay sorry i'm a little i'm i'm i reconfigured all my screens and stuff for for a better layout but i'm still getting used to it so let's begin first thing i'm going to do is um i am so again this is this is with the understanding that we have our uh beta flight uh beta flight 10.7 uh configurator 10.7.0 and that is you you have to have the newest version of the beta flight configurator in order to use uh, beta flight 4.2 and and also uh well we'll get to that in a second so uh the first thing i'm gonna do actually 
this is this is kind of a this would be more like if you're upgrading your firmware so I'm going to plug in my quadcopter hopefully if you can see that can you see that I'm plugging in my quadcopter in with the USB into the flight controller when I say quadcopter I mean the the flight controller the USB on there and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get in here because I already went through and configured everything and so one of the things that I want to do is well let's see let's go to um, pretty much the the only thing that I would be a little concerned about would be the um, why can't I find it here the oh right here the pid tuning all right and again we're gonna get into all this but I'm just kind of showing you this uh, because this is what I have to do before I before I wipe the board so what I'm gonna do here is actually just take a uh, screenshot of this screen if I can figure out how to do that screenshot <laughs> okay no nope, I want this screen I think I got it I think I got it so anyway that's um, let me make sure that I have this here so basically the the point here is if you're going to upgrade your firmware um, and and wipe your board uh, Anytime you're going to do that or change settings, you should just take a screenshot of the uh, configuration because then you'll be able to, you know, just, just go back to it and look at it. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. So we got a screenshot of that. Let me check and make sure that we have that going on here because that is quite important. And I think I do somewhere. Did I get it? All right, hang on. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. I should have. I, I should have done this earlier, <laughs> but I. I did not. Um, so a screenshot is. That's one way that you can do that. Um, and then the other way is that. All right. I think we. I don't know if that's working, but I'm not going to waste any more time on it. So we can do that. The other thing to do is. Um, and this is. Yeah. So if you're going to upgrade your uh, firmware, what you can do is go into the CLI tab. Um, and then you can type in type in diff all and that will give you all of the uh, changes and press enter that will give you all of like your changes that you've made to the flight controller uh, configuration uh, like from stock and then I'm going to click save to file and then I will just say yes save so that's actually I want to put it in uh, no that one won't show up okay we'll just save it like that so that will save it as a file so then what you can do and it will save it just like this in this text text format right here so you can actually just um, just uh, type it in uh, like that so now now that I have that um, I'm going to disconnect my quadcopter um, or no actually I'll take it back I take it back I'm going to well hang on let me think about this because I guess if you if you if it was a brand new quadcopter, most of them like have Betaflight flashed on there already. So that's usually you're usually going to at least be able to get into Betaflight, even if it's just a totally stock um, totally stock setting. So let's click connect. Oh, see now it's not letting me connect. I've noticed sometimes um, you have to like change the port version or what is this? It's showing me. This. There we go. So that's like sometimes the the port usb thing changes i don't know why so we're going to click connect and then down into the cli tab right there i'm going to i gotta remember to zoom in so you guys can see it boom look at that i'm going to type in uh, bl for bootloader right there bl and then i'm going to press enter and then that will put my quadcopter into bootloader mode so that it is ready to uh, flash the firmware so that's the first thing we need to do we need to flash the firmware and so whether you're upgrading firmware or you're just like you've whether you've you're getting a brand new quadcopter and you need to put the newest firmware on there or if you're just upgrading from a later version of firmware after flying it so we're going to go we're going to go over to the update firmware uh, on the top in the top right corner there and then I'm going to select I'm going to select the my board 
Um, and this is also called like a target, uh, like a, 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 yeah, a target. Um, and so basically it just means what type of firmware that's intended for your board, your flight controller board. So there are all kinds of um, flight controller boards, like a ridiculous number. And so mine is Fury F4 OSD. And usually you can find that like in the product manual or the, or the product page. Um, or, or if you're in beta flight, you can go into the CLI tab and type in version like that. Um, <clears throat> okay. So also if you, oh yeah, if you have questions in the chat, be sure to tag me at RC with Adam. So that way I can kind of see, uh, it'll, it'll be easier for me to see that as well. Um, Oh, let's see. Hourglass, Hourglass DJ says, I have an iFlight Nazgul uh, 5.6S with FreeSky, Tyrannus QX7, and just updated to Betaflight 4.2. Now I have no switches saved anymore, and my modes are reversed. What is going on? I'm confused now. Um, yes, that is confusing. I, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not sure if that would have to do with your specific setup. Um as far as the modes being reversed, I'm not sure about, I'm not sure what that means exactly, but, um, but yeah, so this is an important thing to note here while we're talking about updating the firmware is that, um, oh, shucks. I just realized that you, for some reason, this is getting cut off. Why is this getting cut off? Okay. Let me fix this. Cause you need to see this. Um, can you still see it? No, you can't see it. Let me, ch I got to change like the formatting of the screen. So beta flight 4.2 is different from the other, uh, beta flights and the, the previous versions. And it's different enough that you cannot just, um, take all of your, uh, all of your settings from the previous version and stick it on there. Okay. This is, I'm not sure why this is being like this. I want to make sure that you guys can see, I want to make sure that you guys can see the, uh, the full screen here, like everything everything on here. Oh, okay. There we go. All right. Something like that. I should have fixed this early. <laughs> okay. I think, Oh, okay. I can move it like that. Okay. It's a little, it's a little squash, but I think, I think you'll get the idea. Okay. So, um, right. So basically in the previous way of doing beta flight, you could just take those settings that I, like I just showed where you could save the settings and then just r upload them back into beta flight. So you, that way you wouldn't have to type in all the different stuff. Like we're going to do all your settings would just be in there. Boom. But with beta flight 4.2, um, some of like the really important stuff has changed. Um, like important stuff is in like your quad won't fly right unless the right information is is in there and so if you upload that older version of the information it's not gonna it's not gonna be any good and you'll have problems or the quad won't work or something like that so um i'm trying i'm trying to make sure i cover everything because it's easy to like just like breeze past stuff so if again if you have questions let me let me know um okay okay so now, all right, so we found our target right here. We found the target, which is uh, Fury F4 OSD. Now the thing below it, this is the firmware version. Um, so the latest one, which actually, I think that came out yesterday. So that's very, very recent. Uh, that is 4.2.1 or 4.2.1. And so that is what we're going to use for all this stuff right here. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to leave everything alone. Um, one thing I guess you should, I haven't really experimented with it, but you should uh, do full chip erase, <clears throat> excuse me, to kind of like start from a blank slate, I guess. Again, I'm not, I'm not the most super beta flight um, nerd ever. So what we're going to do is click load, uh, load firmware online. And so we do need an internet connection to do this. And then you can see it gives us the details right here, the, uh, the target, all this different stuff. Um, I'm really glad that they stopped doing the whole like 
unified and legacy or whatever thing it was, even though they do show it right there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it because I don't think it's a thing anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, it tells you all of the uh, release notes and information and stuff. Um, and this most recent one is just like a small update. But anyway, that's a little too detailed. So what we're going to do is it says loaded online firmware right there. So what we're going to do is click flash firmware. Also, um, so when I in the in the CLI command in when we were connected to Betaflight, I typed in BL for bootloader mode. Um, that's just a, it just kind of an easy way of getting your quadcopter into the mode that it needs to be in in order to flash. Otherwise, you would just press the button on the uh, flight controller board, which is usually called the boot button. And so um, you would just press that and then plug in your, uh, usually that's how it works. You just press the button down and then you plug in your flight controller uh, to the USB cable. And then it works. And now it's flashing. And so when it flashes it, it's going to get rid of everything that I put in there. So I hope... Hopefully I don't miss anything. Hopefully I won't forget anything. Um, also, yay, programming successful. That's always a fun thing to see right there. I love that. Programming successful. Man, I'll tell you what, man. When I was first getting started with my Wizard X220, I was like, there was I, oh, so many times that thing would get like so close, that little loading bar, and then it would be like, programming unsuccessful. And I was like, oh, so frustrating but it is so worth it i see somebody tagged me hang on uh hourglass is uh, dj says uh if i if i can't get it fixed uh by opening the ports then i'll have to manually set all reset set all the switches on the qx7 uh for the umpteenth hundredth time again yeah by opening the ports do you mean like the actual physical switches or or something um, wolves I can't pronounce that first part but wolves says uh, do you really RC with Adam do you really recommend the upgrade is there a difference that a beginner would feel between the firmwares is it worth the effort that's a great question and the thing is is that for me for me um, okay short answer yes Short answer, yes. Um, but it's not like absolutely necessary, okay? So to be to, to be clear about this is like, if you are a beginner and you just got, a, you know, you just got a quadcopter um, and it's, you got it out of, out of the box and it's flying and maybe it has like beta flight, it really, any, any older version of firmware and it has beta flight on it and it's, it's flying fine, you're having a good time. Um, and maybe you can like barely fly anyway. And so your movements are all, you know, jerky and, um, and you're crashing a lot and stuff and, and you don't want to like sort of mess with the settings anymore. Then I would say, don't worry about it. Like, don't worry about upgrading at least not yet. Um, and I know that's not a very popular thing to say because everybody's like, yeah, I want the latest and greatest, like the bleeding edge. But I, I just think that like yeah this can be a huge pain and also i know we're taking a little segue here but that's what we get to do when we do these live things um also i was looking at the joshua bardwell videos about 4.2 and like some of the things that he's like you must do this and i'm like oh shoot i guess i must do it right like in order to make the quad fly well no like you don't actually have to do all the things that he says that you should do to make the quad fly uh it's just if you want the quad to fly it at its best. And, I mean, honestly, I don't know. I don't think – I think I need to get better before I need to get my quad better. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, at the same time, I think that uh, I think that there are noticeable improvements in 4.2. But how much you notice them is going to vary quite a bit depending on how uh, how – good you are as a pilot already so basically if yeah i think i know yeah i said everything i said everything there so short answer no you don't have to do it longer answer if 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 you're willing to go through a little bit of the trouble 
um, then I think it could be nice. And I think there are some upgrades um, aside from just flight performance, like technical stuff, I think. Boom. Okay. Um, uh, Arnold Vlog says, you got a haircut. I did get a haircut. I, I haircutted my face, actually. So that's different. It's kind of nice, actually, even though it, 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 it makes me look like I'm 10. But, oh well, I guess. Um, Empathy008, hi, Adam. Hello, Empathy008. How are you? Cool. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, uh, Hourglass DJ says, I mean the port section in beta flight. Uh, the port section in beta flight. Are you saying your ports are reversed? Or the switches? Yeah, I don't like. I don't know if that's is that a free sky thing. See, I'm just I'm really I'm honestly I'm really out of the loop when it comes to free sky stuff. But I don't think your I don't think your trans that shouldn't affect your transmitter. I don't think so unless it unless it does. But I'm sorry, honestly, I can't I can't really help you with that. Um, it is beyond it is beyond me at the moment anyway. But somebody in the chat help that person please. Uh, okay. <clears throat> anyway, so, all right. So, yes. Okay. So, the point is, you don't necessarily have to upgrade, but whether or not you do upgrade, like, the, the, the yeah, this is going to help. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Moving on. Continuing here. So, our programming is successful. That's fantastic. Uh, what we want to do now is, uh, well, we can just hit connect uh, to, uh, right? Yeah. I think that's right. So we'll come over here. We'll hit connect. All right. And now, now it says, do you want to apply custom defaults? And we want to say, yes, apply those custom defaults. Now it's going to like kick us out back to the main screen and we should just be able to connect. And then it says, warning, the following problems with your configuration. Don't freak out. Okay. They're just saying, Hey, your accelerometer is enabled, but it's not calibrated. Okay. And that's, um, that's pretty much a standard thing anyway. So the accelerometer, uh, my understanding is your accelerometer is basically just used for uh, if you need to do uh, auto level flight. So I, I still leave mine enabled. I like to do auto level sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our quadcopter right here. So you can see it. So you can see the graph of our quadcopter um, right here. And this is the, so this is the setup page. Um, and so what we want to do is click this button, the calibrate accelerometer button. When we, so we're going to put this, we're going to put the quadcopter on a, as get it as level, like as flat as we can on like a desk. That's what I'm doing. I'm setting it on a desk and you can see the, 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 uh, the little 3d model of it is not moving. We're going to hit calibrate accelerometer. We're going to calibrate that baby. And now you can see it like it leveled out. Cause it's like, oh, okay, we're level now. Also, uh, I just watched the Joshua Bardwell video about the Z-axis thing. I didn't realize that I never really messed with the Z-axis. I didn't realize that was like a thing. But apparently some people thought that the Z-axis had a, an effect on the flight performance, but it does not have an effect on the flight performance. All it does is it resets the direction that the quadcopter is in. So that way you can point the quadcopter towards the screen and then click reset Z-axis. And then now... You can't really see it that well on here, but now the quadcopter will follow like the model on the screen if you need it to. Um, okay, so while we're while we're on this main page, actually, um, let's. Uh, it's good. It's worth mentioning here that your flight controller. Wow, there's we're gonna, we're actually going to have quite a bit to to cover here. But that's okay. I love it. I love it because this this is uh, this is like a whole huge huge uh learning curve thing for beginners which is great i love tackling this so um so we're uh, yeah i'm gonna throw a lot at you in this but you know just just hang on and take take in what you can so the what what this model is helpful for is when we tilt our quadcopter we want to make sure that the model this 3d model here matches what our quadcopter is doing Okay, and if you notice like, hey, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Like when I pitch forward, it's pitching backwards. How, how, what do I do? Well, we're gonna cover that um, and, and that's, that's, we're gonna uh, change the, 
whatever they call that, the trim on the board or something. And we're going to cover that in the next, uh, in or very shortly. We're going to cover that very shortly. And the reason and the thing to take note of right here, I want you to take note of this right here. This um, is our flight controller. That's the brain of the quadcopter. And that's really what, that's really who we're talking to when we plug in uh, our quadcopter to the computer. And so if we zoom in here, you see that arrow, that, that arrow right there. Wait, what's going on? Why can't I do that? What's going on? Oh, there we go. Boom, arrow. You see that arrow? Um, sometimes it's different for different boards, but that right there is, that tells us what the, uh, like the standard forward direction is. So typically where the arrow is, that's where your, uh, that's going to point forwards, like where your camera is, your quadcopter camera is pointed. If it's pointed, if the arrow is pointed in a different direction, uh, then what you like see if it's point if well that's the way it's pointed right now if it was pointed like that or if it was pointed to the basically to the side of your quadcopter then what you would want to do is is virtually rotate that in, you know instead of having to like rebuild your quadcopter you can just virtually rotate it and i'm going to show you how to do that in just one moment but first um oh no nobody's talking to me that was my mistake i thought somebody was talking to me oh wait yeah pat pat farrell says hey adam hey pat How's it going? We're talking about Betaflight. Um, and if you're just joining us, we are uh, doing a beginner walkthrough through Betaflight as well as 4.2. So we just flashed 4.2. And there are some a few differences in 4.2, but this will really apply to uh, most of just any version of Betaflight because more of it is the same than, than different. So uh, if I can figure out what I'm doing here. All right. Okay, we're back to this. All right, so this is our setup page. Um, and then next thing we're going to do, we're going to go over here to the ports tab, the ports tab right there and the ports tab. Now, the thing about the ports tab is, um, the UART. So don't mess with the, where it says USB VCP. Don't mess with that. Um, and it says, it says that do not disable MSP or I guess that would be, yeah, right there, configure it, yeah, on the first port, unless you know what you are doing, and I don't know what I'm doing, so we're going to leave that alone, um, and because if you, if you do switch it, you'll have to, it, it'll, it, like, you won't be able to talk, you won't be able to talk to your flight controller by just plugging in the USB cable, you have to, like, go through, like, kind of a, like, process and stuff, so just don't, don't mess with that. So we have UART 1, UART 3, and UART 6. On my flight controller board, I think I remember how I wired it, but if we if we look at this picture here, again, very handy picture. If we look at this, uh, you can see that it, th this diagram here. So all of these are pads on the, on the board here, and they are labeled right here, and it tells us what they are. So we have, um, we have uh, TX6. I was saying, well, or yeah, right. Let's just look at that one. So we have TX six, we have uh, TX one, and we have, or the other one got TX three down there. And usually, or I think always, uh, you're gonna have a corresponding. You'll have like TX one, and then you'll have RX one, and you have TX six, and you have, or yeah, TX six. Is that another TX six? Oh yeah, that's weird. Is that normal? Did I know about that before? Why would there be two? These are all good questions. Anyway, so you have TX6 and RX6, and the RX, um, the RX, uh, let's see, in this case, let me see here. So the R, typically, also notice here how it says RX1 is S bus. So the RX is where you're going to put your receiver. Your where, yeah, where you're going to put your receiver signal wire. But something to keep in mind is that um, depending on the receiver protocol that you're using, the whether it's like S bus or I bus or I mean people people don't really use PPM now um, or something else. Um, but most commonly, I think it's IBUS and SBUS. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, certain uh, certain RX pads 
are for certain protocols. Well, okay, there is a PPM pad specifically for that. Um, so basically the point here is like you need to make sure that your receiver is connected to the correct um, the correct pad, the correct pad here, the correct the RX1 uh, pad. And in this case, this is what I am connected to because and I'm using a Flysky FLI for no, 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 no. I'm using a, uh, a crossover RX. Ah, what six six zero two T A or something model? Uh, basically, it's and it's using S bus protocol. So um, what that means, and typically, typically the 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 port or I mean the the pad like RX one corresponds corresponds to these uarts right here and typically so like uart1 is rx1 uart3 is rx3 and uart6 is rx6 uh, or i uh i'm blanking out kind of but i'm i believe it's either tx or rx i should probably know that but the main thing is like i have my receiver connected to uart1 so here where it says serial rx i'm going to check that right there because i'm telling betaflight that my receiver is soldered to the is soldered to the pad that corresponds to UART one, and so these UART ports here correspond to those pads on the flight controller. And what does UART stand for? It stands for universal. Oh, what does it stand for? Receiving, receiving and transmit. Ah. Oh. I don't remember somebody mentioned it in the chat anyway um so that so right okay so there's that now um another thing just to mention here uh is over here in peripherals R uh, right here on U uh, uart3 it shows i'm not sure why it shows this automatically but it has vtx um irc tramp and what that these things this is for like well, these things are for smart audio. So VTX, TBS, smart audio. And then the other one is um, IRC Tramp. I have smart audio capability on here, but honestly, I I had it set up before, but like now it's, I think I might've rewired something and I don't remember exactly how it's set up. So we're kind of going to skip through that. But basically, if you had a smart audio or were setting up smart audio, you would go to whatever... Um, Oh, it's on the TX, right? Ooh, I'm pretty sure it's on the TX pad. It would be on the TX pad, I believe. Whatever TX pad, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you have your smart audio wire going to. That is the UART that you would want to use, but instead of Serial RX, because we're not using Serial RX, you would go over here to peripherals, and you would click on whatever you have right there. And right now, I don't have anything, or I'm, I'm not going to set it up right now. Um, because there's like this other stuff with the uh, the what is it the the video transmitter tables and honestly I don't understand all that so anyway we have the most important thing serial RX UART one and that's on our R RX one pad and that's connected to our receiver I'm going to go down here and click save and reboot it's going to kick us out and then um, hopefully this this little uh, thing right here will come back to whatever it was supposed to be and then we can click connect and get back in and uh we have uh and then we can go back in here and check and make sure that it stayed there and that's good and uh and yeah and so we have finally made it to the well we just completed the second page in beta flight so you can see like i feel like i'm taking a super long time but uh but um honestly that's just kind of like how it that's like how it goes when you're like getting started uh, in, in beta flight. But once you get the hang of it, you get a lot faster. But but I want to make sure that everything is like as clear as I can make it because I know like I've been in that situation where I'm like, well, wait a minute. What about this thing? And then I'm like, ah, all right. All right. Let me see what's going on in the chat. What do you get? Which, which, um, um, let's see. Let's see. Um, not a lot. Okay, it looks like more. All right, that's 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 fine. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Hold up. Yeah. No, that didn't change anything. Okay. Cool. 
Okay. Uh, are not vlogs asked where should I connect iBus? Yeah, so that's so that's the thing is typically you'll find that in the manual of your flight controller. That again, this this is my, for specifically for my flight controller, and that is going to be the the Mamba F four zero five version one, not the new one. This is version one. And uh, as far as this one, I think I think I had it on TX3 for iBus. Um, the good news is, like, the, yeah, the good news is if you, if you don't know where to find that information, like if you can't find the information, you can just do trial and error. Like you're, uh, as far as I know, in my experience, you're not going to hurt anything by soldering the receiver wire to rx1 going into beta flight clicking the rx1 tab or uart1 on the serial rx and then you know saving it and then trying it and then if that doesn't work you could try the 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 you know tx3 or the tx6 and and again each flight controller they might have like tx1 tx2 tx3 or or more or less so you know this is just an example here but basically Trial and error um, is how you can uh, is how you can do that. Um, <clears throat> yes. Oh, yes. Stuck in trees. Answer that for me. I bus. We go on either RX three. I'm sorry. I think I was saying TX. I meant RX, RX three or RX six. Yes. Very good. That sounds that sounds about right. Um, uh, Akash Thakur says, "Can you give me a brushless motor?" Um, no can you give me a brushless motor <laughs> i go through a lot of motors man no i, I don't have any uh, motors to spare um my 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 knowledge is all that i can give you so sorry about that all right all right so we're in the ports tab we're done with the ports tab let's get into the configuration because this is this is where the the magic really happens uh there's so much magic going on so you'll notice take a look at that mixer thing that's the first thing that shows up right here in beta flight configuration tab and so we'll yeah we'll just we'll go through pretty much all these sections and and what i'm showing you is uh the like the most important things that i check when i'm setting up a quadcopter so there might be other weird situations or things that you need to change depending on your flight controller and stuff but this should be pretty generic. So first thing, mixer quad X, that's its default because that's the kind of quadcopter we have. And then there's all these other kinds of things, but just ignore those. Uh, you'll see here, motor direction is reversed. Um, then there's a little checkbox for that. And they have little arrows right here showing you which way the motors are going. Also, they tell you what the motor numbers are. So motor one, two, three, four. I don't know, that seems like a weird way of, of numbering the motors. Where you have like one and two, I guess it's one on, two. yeah, like you, I'm even on the fronts and odds on the back, but I don't know, that's just hard for me to remember. I wish it was just like in a circle. Anyway, so here's what's really important: in the motor direction is reversed. That is, um, you're telling your quadcopter which way your motors are set up to spin. This does not, does not actually reverse the motor direction. <clears throat> so um so i'm going to click that because my motors i have set up so that they spin in an outward rotation and when i say outward it's kind of like i guess well it's outward from the camera perspective so it's like it's like sweeping away forwards and away from the camera and then the reverse or or the op or the same or basically also in the back the motors are sweeping away from the back of the quadcopter so that is uh really important but again that will not actually reverse the motors if you want to reverse the the spinning physical direction of the motors you can uh get the bl heli configurator uh pass through thing through beta flight and then um, and then use that 
to to do that through the software or you can just rewire the motors switch any two of the three wire motor wires so anyway that's really important so we want to make sure that that is checked as reversed um and then uh we let's see esc motor features um i don't think i did anything with this yeah um bi -direct yeah see bardwell was talking about bi-directional d shot and i was like oh yeah that sounds good but then there's like this whole thing about like you have to like up upgrade the firmware on your escs which might be fairly simple but to me it was it seemed it was just kind of more trouble than like i wanted to deal with but that's supposed to like really be a big improvement so just fyi about that but if again if you're like you know just having a hard time getting your quadcopter even flying don't even worry about it forget about it um let's see so d shot 600 that's just the type of esc that we have and that's the that that comes in there automatically or at least it should I'm not even going to worry about anything else. Oh, one thing to, to just to note here, uh, the motor stop right here. Make sure, like, I guess it's, I'm not sure how it was with older firmware, but the motor stop means that uh, it says don't spin the motors when armed. Um, so what that means is if you flip the arming switch, nothing nothing will happen people say that all the time nothing happening is happening and actually stuff is happening anyway but the motors won't spin i mean they actually won't spin and so um that's a problem because it, it's it could be a problem because I, I like it when the motors spin because it lets me know that the quad is definitely armed so that's really good um and so just make sure that that is not checked you you don't want that checked okay uh board and sensor okay board and sensor alignment here's what i was talking about so board and sensor alignment so this is if your quadcopter if your flight controller is um not like this little arrow thing is pointing that way but maybe your quadcopter is actually uh you know pointing this direction so you're like 90 degrees off there so typically what you need to do and it could also be a situation where your board is mounted um, like upside down, but that's not that's not as common. So what you would do here on the board and sensor alignment right here is you would go to yaw degrees, yaw degrees, and you would type in like, I can't remember which direction it, it kind of turns it, but you can do trial and error really easily. But basically it'd be like 90 degrees or it might be negative 90 degrees or you know 180 degrees if it's if you need to spin it you know do it spin it all halfway around um and so that's what you want you want the yaw because the yaw the yaw is going to take it and just, just going to rotate it rotate it about its z axis i suppose if that means anything so it's not going to pitch it forward and it's not going to roll it it's going to rotate it so that could be really useful depending on what kind of board you have especially if it's a board that is uh diagonal which is a pretty common thing for um uh, micros i think i think it seems pretty common so if the board is kind of at a diagonal you might need to change the orientation by like 45 degrees some boards are intended uh, some boards have the sensor at a 45 degree angle on the boards with that intent that you don't have to change anything so anyway basically again you can go back to the setup uh, page and see if everything's working fine one thing to note here in the system configuration right now and i guess this is a big deal and honestly i'm just i'm not super up on the again the beta flight technical stuff i'm like okay if it flies better that's cool but other than that i just don't, I don't really care but basically right here where it says 800 or 8 kilohertz 8 kilohertz yeah uh that's the gyro update frequency that probably means nothing to you right now and that's okay but basically you can't change that but this one the pid loop frequency um i think like certain flight controllers are limited like i guess the highest it goes is eight kilohertz here um but yours might only be able to do four kilohertz i think if you're buying like a, a brand new quadcopter like a like a good 
like a, like a decent level quadcopter right now, then you should be fine with doing eight kilohertz. I left mine at eight kilohertz for my F uh, Mamba F405 version one flight controller. And it, um, it seems to fly fine. I think it flies. I think it flies. Okay. So anyway, basically the point is, um, if you drop it down to four, you're probably totally safe and that's fine. And that has to, honestly, I, 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 well, I'm not going to try and explain that right now, but it's basically it's basically a thing. It's a thing with the ESCs and the and the sensors and and technical stuff. So um, over here, accelerometer trim. I've never actually used that. I'm not totally sure how to use that, and usually I don't ever have to touch it, and that's why I haven't really learned much about it. A lot of times you learn about the stuff that you have a lot of problems with because then you actually have to get in there and, and do stuff, do stuff with it. Arming. Here's an, a really important one right here. Arming. You see that? See where it says arming? Maximum arm angle in degrees. What we want to do is set that baby to 180. And also, something to note, sometimes there are these little uh, question marks and they will explain things. So this says craft. Oh. Uh. It says craft will okay. Craft will not arm if tilted more than specified number of degrees. Only applies if accelerometer is enabled, which we do have that enabled actually. Um, setting to 180 will effectively disable check, uh, meaning it'll disable that that uh, setting. So that is what I have, and that's just again. This is one way of doing it. A lot of people probably do all this stuff on the Betaflight CLI because they're smarter and nerd more nerds than i am so uh we set that to 180 and this is so that like if your quadcopter is upside down uh so that you can use turtle mode or if it is in a tree upside down or sideways or whatever you can arm your quad also if you're in mid-air in mid-flight and you're like oh no i you know crashed things are bad you can shut your quad off but then you're like oh wait i think i can i think i can recover you can turn your quad back on and then um, rearm and possibly save yourself. So that would actually probably be kind of a good thing to practice. Uh, of course, I don't know if it would if I would depend on that too much. Like I wouldn't want to be rolling around with a nice GoPro and setup and stuff, uh, and then in practice, you know, disarming and then rearming because that could be a little, little bit risky. Uh, so uh, we're gonna type in budge. Oh, yeah, let's do this. Oh, wait, budge. Did I type that one in? Budge, let's do... Uh, I'm going to call the craft name budge. Oh, no, I was going to put in the Betaflight version, but I won't do that because the Betaflight version always shows up at the beginning when you plug in your quadcopter. So if you have your DVR rolling, then um, then you can see which version of Betaflight you have. <clears throat> All right, before I get uh, too far, let me check out the chat. Mm, great sound effects today. Akash Thakur says how to set up GPS in SPF3 Acro. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, yeah, I have not messed with any GPS stuff. Oh, let's see. Pat Farrell says, my motors have a bit of grit in them. Yeah, me too. Uh, wondering if I should take the bell off and clean them or just keep using them. Uh, yeah, you should take off the bell and clean them. Yeah, definitely. Um, in fact, that's probably what I should do. I'm so bad to my motors. And I crashed I crashed them really good on the, the budget basher here. And now they're like, can you hear this? Like, I don't know if you can hear that. They don't sound good. I think the, I don't know if something's crooked or if the bearings, the bearings are probably a little bit messed up. But anyway, that's why I'm saying I need some motors. You know what I'm saying? Asking me for motors. Uh, we all need motors though. Uh, yeah, you should take off those, uh, take off that bell and uh, and clean those babies out. And I just use, I just use like water. I think maybe you should use distilled water. Like like the kind you'd put in like a battery like a like a, a lead acid battery, but uh, 
I don't know. I haven't really noticed much of a difference, but I would say, yeah, definitely just get that grid out. Cause one time I had like a magnet, a magnetic or not magnetic. It was like a piece of metal. It was like, there was some sort of, I don't know if it was like a natural occurring piece of magnetic debris or what it was, but it, uh, it got stuck in the motor and, you know, it, that's not going to come out on its own because it's, it's held in place by the magnet. So the motor was its own destruction. Okay. All right. All right. Moving on. Uh, oh, uh, Flaco85 says, uh, Adam thought you don't use Apple. I do use Apple. I do. I guess that's obvious uh, now, but I forgot to mention that because I use a Mac. So, that is just something to keep in mind. There shouldn't really be any difference between uh, maybe a little bit of difference in terms of the installation of Betaflight and that sort of thing. But in terms of actually in the configurator, I don't think there are any differences between the Mac version and the Windows version. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but that's something good to uh, good to mention about that. So, yes, that is the case. In fact uh home drone in fpv hello and welcome home drone says don't use those motors clean those babies out otherwise you're going to burn out the flight controller board clean those motors that's what he says <clears throat> all right uh oh lucas uh yeah lucas says uh use blue tack for cleaning your bells it's a good idea blue tack stick that stuff in there and it just grabs all that grit kind of like duct tape Kind of like duct tape for getting lint off of stuff, sort of. So it's like it's like a clay type of stuff. That's a good idea. Great idea. Boom. Good idea. Uh, Wolf says, I think a good strong spray of WD-40 would help clean up grime in the motor. I yeah, I have mixed I have mixed thoughts on that as well. Because on the one hand, it's like yeah, it seems like that would totally make sense to have um, to have like you know lubricate the motor and stuff, and also keep it keep. I don't know. It just seems like a good idea. Uh, but at the same time, maybe that would attract more dust and dirt and keep it stuck in there. I, I don't know. I think it kind of depends. Also, there's a kind of a thing about people, whether or not to use oil on your motors. To me, it seems like a no brainer to use oil on the motors, but I guess the type of oil would matter. Uh, Mr. Shutterbug, I believe is the channel name. He has a good video about putting oil on micro motors. I guess ones that don't, especially ones that don't have a bearing, a, a, like an actual roller bearing or whatever kind of bearing they have. Anyway, moving on. Okay. So, all right. So we're in the configuration. I got, I got sidetracked there for a little bit. Okay. Uh, oh, what is a bell? Somebody asked, what is a bell? That's a good question. A motor bell. That's just, that's the outside of your motor. That's the part that spins. That's the spinny part of your motor. That's, that's the motor bell on the outside. The inside is the stator. And sometimes the, the bell is called like, well, it's called the bell or the rotor. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Or the rotor bell. If you want to combine the two, that's what that is. And that's the part that uh, that's if you think about it, that's like the only moving part of a quadcopter. So kind of important to keep that keep that clean. All right. Moving on. Moving on here. Uh, what we have. So we did the personalization camera angle. I don't know what the point of that would be. I guess maybe it would show up in your OSD. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to mess with that. Here's something really important right here. Really important. So right here, receiver, receiver uh, settings right here. So you see we have, uh, this is actually already set up because I am using SBUS, but you see you need to select which type of receiver you're using. Typically, uh, it's going to be a serial-based receiver. That's most common, and it's, it gives examples here, uh, SBUS, spec, spec sat, that'd be Spectrum Satellite, and some D, which I don't know what that is. And so that it, that's also for IBUS as well. So serial-based for IBUS as well, so for FlySky stuff excuse me and then once you click on that then you have this other drop down menu and that's where you actually pick which one which type so like ibus uh i've used that a lot because i use fly sky stuff you got free sky f port different options so right there we're going to click s bus as it was already set up 
I don't really mess with many of these other features, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, one thing I will do is with air mode, I take off air mode permanently enabled. I'm going to get rid of that because I like to have it on a switch and partially because that's just what I've been doing. Um, I don't know if there's like a whole lot of like, I don't know if it's really a super great practice or not, but that's just what I do. I like to have it on a switch. OSD, we're going to make sure that that is on since our board has an OSD feature. That stands for on-screen display. That'll be all the information that we get from our uh, flight controller. And uh, let's see, D-Shot beacon configuration. So here we can do a little beacon um, if we lose our receiver uh, RX set. So if we, uh, so when we, I guess when we, when we get our receiver connection and when we lose connection, it'll beep. And th that's like the the motors, the ESCs beeping. I don't know how it does that, to be honest with you. It's pretty crazy. Um, all this other stuff, beeper configuration, this is just for like, what do you want the quadcopter to beep for? And sometimes it's annoying if you, if you have, if you're like plugging and unplugging the quadcopter from Betaflight a lot. Uh, like if you, you know, if you want it to beep when it's like, I don't know, gyro calibrated or, or battery low or d different, different things so you can play around with that it's not really a big deal um and that's it that's it on this screen i don't think i forgot anything here again there may be stuff that i'm not setting up that i should set up um to get the best performance out of my quadcopter but i you know it seems to be flying just fine like this all right so it kicked us out because we hit save and reboot i forgot to mention that Okay, so it's still not letting me connect. So let me switch over to this one. Honestly, it's just kind of trial and error. But it seems to work most of the time. So let's go back into our configuration tab. Make sure that everything stayed the same. We have our reverse motors, all that sort of stuff, the arm angle. Uh, we have our accelerometer on. We don't have a barometer and we don't have a magnetometer. A magnetometer. Yeah, so everything looks good. Everything looks good. And and we did hit save and reboot. You got to remember to hit save and reboot on every page or or just save if it doesn't if it's not save and reboot. Uh power and battery, I don't really mess with power and battery. I just haven't really found the need to, but here is where you can mess with like to for your OSD, it'll tell you your battery voltage if you have it set up as such. And so if your bat if you find that your you, the voltage that you're getting in your OSD is not reading what's the actual battery voltage, then you can make little adjustment, adjust, adjustments right here. But uh, I haven't really gotten into that. Oh, one more thing to note. I have up here at the top right hand corner, uh, ex uh, expert mode is enabled. So if you don't see as many items on the left hand side, you can click enable expert mode. Really, most of the time you don't need to do expert mode, but we'll just have it so that way we can kind of briefly walk through everything. So I don't really mess with power and battery. Fail safe. Uh, you don't really need to mess with fail safe, and you probably shouldn't unless you have a specific reason to and you kind of know what you're doing. Basically, the fail safe, uh, the, the main fail safe thing right here is called stage two settings. And you have a guard time for stage two activa act activation. And uh, let's see, fail safe, th throttle low delay. And so basically it's set to drop out of the sky shortly after losing connection with your receiver. And, the, and I think that's, it's not very elegant, but I think that that is probably the best option because it just, uh, it takes the guesswork out of it because like, say if you set it to land and I've done this sometimes I've had this set to land and in some cases it's good, but it might not be. But anyway, say you're flying along and then, and then you lose connection with your transmitter. Um, your receiver loses connection with your transmitter. Then if it drops, then at least you'll, you'll know where to look for it. And you'll know that the motors weren't trying to spin when it was actually stuck on something and that could cause the motors or the board to burn out and it's not going to you know float away into a lake 
or something and it's not going to float away into somebody's face so that's why having it drop can can be you know ideal and there's a bunch of other type of stuff especially if you do gps rescue but i have not messed with any of that so basically you don't need to mess with the fail safe you just want to make sure that it's set to drop and pretty much leave it alone now we're going to get into pid tuning which um we're not actually going to do at all <laughs> okay uh, Wolves asks, uh, have you, uh, question time. Wolves asks, have you found, uh, using turtle mode with reversed motors pushes cut grass into your quads, uh, sides or into the boards? Um, you know, I hadn't really thought about it. I have thought about how, if you have the, the motors reversed, I think kind of the thing with the motors reversed is that, um, it, like, I don't know if anybody's done actual testing on this, but. The idea is that it keeps uh, keeps junk from getting splattered onto the lens of the quadcopter because the because the propellers are spinning in an outward fashion, so it keeps stuff from getting slung onto the camera, which is really important when you're trying to see where you're going. Um, and I think it does just sort of natu. Yeah, I mean if you if you start chopping up grass it's going to get flung somewhere <clears throat> excuse me so i think your options are either have it get slung into the camera or have it get slung into this side of the quadcopter and i don't know you you make the decision on that the other thing the other idea is that possibly if you if you are uh, flying and you clip a branch having the propeller spin outward will will it'll, it'll keep the branches from getting sucked in sucked in from getting drawn into the front of the quadcopter which would which could you know cause a big problem because if you have if you have your your motors or if you have your propellers if i can try and get this on the camera if you have your propellers like that and it's pushing outward then it'll it'll take that branch and kind of fling it around behind the the quadcopter sort of as opposed to chopping it inward and then the quadcopter goes Wah! so that's the uh that's the theory uh behind that good question though uh luca says only oil uh only oil in your bearings if the oil gets mixed with dust it's a nightmare yeah that makes sense it works like dust glue yes that 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 is that is true so that's the yeah it depends on what kind of environment you live in i think I think. <clears throat> uh, Akash asks, is Betaflight better uh, than Clean Flight, or which is better? Uh, Clean Flight is pretty much, pretty much dead. Clean Flight is, um, I, I don't, I think it's still around, but I don't think anybody really uses it. There's not really any reason to use it. Um, I know, like, I mean, in my older videos, I was using Clean Flight because at the time, Clean Flight was still kind of. It was still kind of around, but now it's it's not. Um, so beta flight is better than clean flight because it's getting updated and stuff, especially now. <clears throat> uh, Wolves ask, shouldn't you have air mode always on? Because if you go to idle, you won't be able to control it. Also, wouldn't it uh, tie up one more switch on your controller? Uh, we're going to get to the switch setup. Um, but uh basically no i just i like to have it uh i have it on a, on a three position switch and i have it at the top of the three position switch and so typically when i start up if unless i just already go to acro mode or air mode i'll it'll start up in auto level mode um so yeah so if you go to idle you wouldn't be able to control it uh, i'm not sure about that i've, I've i haven't had uh, any of those problems but yeah you don't really want to hang out at idle for very long really um just in terms of because the quadcopter a lot of times it might just tilt over but if, if you like bring up the throttle a little bit then it's okay and really i haven't had as many problems um as i maybe used to or or as other people have used to used used to have about the uh the air mode with uh, like bouncing and hopping i think they they made that a lot better so i haven't had too many problems with that but i try to land very softly anyway because i'm just so awesome 
Uh, Damien Monyobo uh, says, "What must I do if I am the only if if then only one motor twitches and none of them spin?" <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Somebody in the chat. Somebody in the chat. Help that person. Um, cause I, I, uh, it, um, we got to continue on with this, but that's a, that's a good question. Uh, if one twitches and, and none of them spin, um, well, I mean, we're going to need some more details, like as far as like when that happens and stuff, cause it, it could just be that, that your, it sounds like a, some sort of like a fail safe condition or something or something, something's going on with the ESCs. Also, what type of ESCs you have and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but thanks for the question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Gregory Dow says, if you push... Hi there. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if you push wrong, if you push the wrong setting and don't know what to put back, just go to the different tab and come back. Don't always push save and reboot. Oh yes, that's a good right. So yeah, so yeah, so he's saying if you if you're making changes in Betaflight, pro tip from Gregory, if you're making changes in Betaflight and you're like, oh my gosh, oh I just did, oh wait, what did I do? Oh my goodness, you just go back to this tab, and then it will be. Man, I got a lot of warnings on that one. Did you see that? That was crazy. Uh, of course you saw it because it's right there. But that was uh, wasn't expecting that. But yeah, that's the PID tuning. So if you make uh, changes and you're like, I don't know what happened, then just go back to the other tab. Don't hit save. Don't hit save if you if you made a mistake. Um, that's a that's a great that's a great advice. Uh, uh, Lucas says I think I'm gonna love PID tuning. Yeah, I don't know. Like I I just I. I probably still won't because I just don't really feel the need to. But I guess if I was, I mean, it's, you know, it could be fun. I could, I could, I could see how that could be fun. <clears throat> that was a good tip though. Uh, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Somebody says use iNav. Flaco says use iNav. I'm not sure what that was to though what what that was well, who that was to whom that was directed <clears throat> uh luca asks can you explain what the p and the d do honestly luca no because i still find this very confusing um as soon as i figure it out i will though i will explain what the heck is going on here but here's the here's the thing I still stand by that the the people at Betaflight are doing a great job of in and, and, and some of the top pilots will attest to this that they're doing such a good job in Betaflight that you really don't need to mess with your PIDs like you're, and I say PIDs that's the P and the I and the D and those are like individual settings that you can change and this affects your uh and i'm saying this for people that aren't familiar with this this affects um like the feel of your quadcopter and kind of how it flies and how it responds um but keep in mind if you start messing around with this that's how we got all those warnings so he says current slider positions may cause flyaways motor damage or unsafe uh craft behavior Please proceed with caution. And there's a bunch of red everywhere. So that's uh, what you need to be careful about because if you do uh, mess with things too much and you don't know what you're doing, you could smoke your motors. You could cause a lot of problems. So um, I would love to tell you, but honestly, honestly, I just don't know. I don't know. And to some extent, I don't care because if I don't have to mess with it, then I'm happy. But that's just me personally. If you enjoy that kind of thing, more power to you. Now, um, let's see. Okay, so let's get back to it here. So we just finished up with the failsafe. Basically, don't mess with that. Just make sure that it drops out of the sky. Now we're in the PID tuning section. Now, here on this first page, we have all of the PID tuning stuff. And again, as I just said, we have the, the each, the P and the I and the D are different um, settings, and that will affect the feel 
of your quadcopter, but you really need to know what you're doing. And you change those, the proportional, integral, and derivative. I should mention that. That's what those stand for, the P and the I and the D. And you change those for each of the uh, uh, axes, the roll, the pitch, and the yaw. But if you're a beginner, don't even mess with it. Don't even worry about it. What we're going to do is go over here to the rate profile settings. And this is really important. This is this is what you this is what you will notice the most um, when you when you change these uh, these things. So <clears throat> the rates right here. So here's let me see. Oh, were you looking at the right thing? There we go. So in 4.2, in this latest and greatest version of Betaflight, the one thing that they've done is they've changed. They've added rate types. So you have like race flight kiss actual and quick rates honestly i haven't really heard much about the other three but actual rates um is go let's we'll just click on that and so it'll say warning you're changing the rate types if you change the rate types your rates will be set to de a default curve so basically they're saying if you have already set up your rates you know make a note of them before before you go changing this because it's going to get rid of them but we're at default already so with this they have sent center sensitivity max rate expo and and then it gives you the degrees per second now the degrees per second um i i think i have i have a video talking about rates and expo uh but um although not specifically in beta flight but anyway the so the max velocity the degrees per second that's typically what i talk about the rates in terms of because it's to me it's easy to understand um but that's basically that's going to be your maximum rate and that's degrees per second so if you have like here it's showing if you have a uh everything is set to 670 degrees per second so that means that you will be able to uh basically pretty much you'll be able to do like two flips in a second or two rolls in one second which is uh that's pretty fast it's pretty fast or well or you know do a, a flip in a half second so personally i fly with fairly low uh rates and some people fly with like really high rates like a thousand degrees per second 1200 um i don't know and that's to me that's just like just too much going on like who wants to do who needs to do a flip that fast you know what i'm saying you can't see anything but to each their own um so anyway the thing with the actual rates uh there's joshua bardwell has a video talking about the actual rates so i'm not going to spend too much time getting too in depth in this um but basically it's it's a bit easier to adjust your um you can sort of separate your your center your your sensitivity towards the center of the stick and then what you want your maximum uh velocity or your maximum degrees per second to be and then you can use the expo to sort of make uh changes to the actual curve so you can see how this there's this red curve right there when i increase the expo it, it it like increases that curve it makes it more of a curve and so it's not quite as straight and so what that's going to do is that'll allow you to have more of a um more uh you can move your stick more and have less response on the quadcopter right here and so it's like softer and then once you get out to here it'll like ramp up to your 670 degrees per second right there <clears throat> so i think that i think that explained it uh pretty well uh i think or something i don't know to be honest like rates and stuff can get very confusing and so that is in contrast to the standard rates that that I've talked about, and I mean, everybody's talked about a lot until just recently, uh, because that's all there was, which was RC rate. You have your uh, super rate, which they don't label that as super rate there for some reason. I don't know why. But you have your RC rate, you have your super rate, and you have your RC expo. Um, but again, watch that, watch that Joshua Bardwell uh, video, because I think he does a really good job of explaining uh, that. So, let me see if I can, did I ever, did I actually capture that? You know, I was trying to get that screenshot of the, uh, 
of my rates there. I'll feel a little silly if if they're not what I if it didn't turn out like how I thought it was. Thought it did. Uh, no, that didn't work. Uh, that's why that didn't work. Okay. Okay. Well, no problem. Then what I'll do here is uh, I will just say, um, where's my uh, uh, where'd that go? So, what I'm okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to because I've I've kind of figured out the rates that I like to use. Um, when I'm flying so what I want to do is kind of convert my I want to get those rates back is what I'm is what I'm saying so one way of doing that is this uh, converter tool thing that somebody created and I believe this is actually oh I had to change that a little bit so it was I think it was 200 and then or was it 180 it might have been 180 well, okay, for the purposes of this demonstration, let me just let me just uh, put it in kind of like this. So about 50, that's actually pretty close. Um, let me, so I'm going to use the actual rates and because I've been kind of playing around with this. So I'm going to switch over to the actual rates. So for me, um, and these are like like the rates that you saw in the be in the footage in the beginning of this video. Um, but for this, I think the center sensitivity around, I think 200 is good. The max rate I'm going to put at about, I think it was like 620. Was it 620? Uh, I think this max rate was, I might have to change this later, but let's just say about 470. And then the yaw, I always have the yaw less. So yeah, sorry, I'm getting a little too <laughs> too into the details for my specific setup. But basically, generally, um, I have my roll as the highest uh, highest number of degrees. I have the pitch as the second highest number of degrees. And then the yaw as the least number of degrees in movement. And the reason is, generally, I... I I will want to roll more. I tend to, you know, I'm going to roll the quad more doing either full rolls or just turning and banking and that sort of thing. And then the pitch is very noticeable um, when I change the pitch. So I don't want the 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 pitch uh, number of degrees to be too high because otherwise, like, uh, it'll it it could change the. Um, I won't be able to have as nice of a smooth movement um, for the pitch because it'll it, it might like change the pitch too much so I want more control on the pitch uh, of course as I'm saying that uh, I realize that I haven't actually played around too much with the act with actual rates that's not confusing at all uh, the 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 new actual rates um, so I may actually be able to still have high full, full a higher pitch rate max rate but then a lower center sensitivity i'll have to play around with that but anyway basically uh so i'm going to use my roll the most my pitch the second most and the yaw uh you know not as much so i don't know let's see like one second for that i don't know let's say three just say 290 oh, i'm not really sure and then for this we'll just set it to like 60 does that seem reason i don't know something like that I'll have to I'll have to play around with this a little bit honestly, uh, but we could try something like that. So you can see here at least uh, the basic idea, which is actually I feel like that should be a little lower. That should be I should feel like that should be like 180, maybe 180. Hmm. Let's keep it 200 on the yaw. I don't. And it's hard to tell from that little graph there, but. Something like that. That's how I'm going to set mine up. And I feel like that works. It seems to work pretty well for me. Really, I never mess with any of this other stuff. This TPA, TPA, breakpoint, throttle limit. I've really never messed with that. Um, I, could you use this to just uh, set the desired throttle limit percentage? Setting to 100 disables the feature. Oh, is that, I guess that, uh, pardon my ignorance, but I think that you could just limit your throttle using that. Virtually limit your throttle. That could be pretty sweet. Okay, that 
that may answer some people's questions that people that have, that, that have asked me recently. Oh, and here's our little preview right here. Uh, if we want to preview our rates, uh, which we can't do yet because we haven't set up the receiver. So anyway, that's the rates. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen here and click save. Just like that. Also take note that we have profile one and rate profile one. So you can, as it says here, up to uh, up to three up to three different PID profiles can be stored. Um, and then I guess that's just for PIDs. And then you have your rate profiles. So three different rate profiles. And uh, that's actually how I uh, crashed the other day when I was flying around and I, I had the GoPro on there too. And I was, I guess I forgot which rate profile I had been using or I was trying this, out this like one that had really low rates. And I thought that, you know, I would pull the stick back and I'd move this much amount that I'm used to and that did not happen and i like was barely able to do flips and rolls so make sure you check your uh, rate profile so again click save i think i already clicked save and then we're going to move on to the receiver which is where a lot of people have a lot of problems getting their quadcopter working <clears throat> in fact soon in august some I don't know how soon, uh, but soon I will have a video uh, talking about how like problem very most common problems with setting up your receiver to a butterfly. So Anish Patil, 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 Anish, hello, welcome, welcome back to RC with Adam, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great. I hope you're still awake. I know we uh, this is this is taking a while. Um, but don't worry, you'll get the hang of it, and you'll be like whoosh, breezing through uh, this eventually once you get better, uh, better at it. And and yeah, again, to me the fun the fun part is going out and flying, and not so much messing with like the beta flight stuff. Somebody says, "Ghost Man Grower says you should get the Fly Sky Nirvana." Well, Ghost Man, I thought about that, and then I was like, nah. But no, I really did. I was thinking about it, um, but then the, the problem is I turned into a pincher. So now, well, it's like a modified pinching. So now uh, I use my thumbs and my first finger to fly, and it really it has changed my life. And so that's what I like to do now. And the Nirvana, I think, is like, that does not work well with the Nirvana because it's like specifically designed for thumbers. It's like a N64 controller. Um, so I don't think I'll be getting the Nirvana, but uh, maybe the Paladin or maybe something else. Honestly, uh, no. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that later. I'm trying to stay on topic here. Oh, Anish says, how is Yashin 1000 TVL CCD cam for FPV? It's probably pretty good. I'm not sure though. Uh, 1,000 is quite a bit, but I don't know. I'd have to need some more. I'd need some more specifics. Maybe somebody else who has one of those can help you. Also, how is the Eashin ROTG to ROTG T2 receiver? That's like the one you connect to. Isn't that the one you connect to your phone? I think it is. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't have one. I was going to get one, but I never got one. But some people, people seem to say that it's, um, it's pretty good. But there, I think there is some lag and stuff. And then using your phone might not be the best option. I, yeah, I'm going to have to get one. I'm going to get one. And I'm going to try it out. Because that could be really cool. Because it's like you have a phone, you know. It's like a pretty nice screen. So what if you could just connect a a uh you know a thing to it and then do that well that was super vague i mean connect the things so that you could do an fpv feed to your phone <laughs> oh that's what i mean um <clears throat> also what uh N ntsc versus pal in the fpv hobby uh i don't think it makes any difference my understanding is those are different video formats for different countries in the u.s 
feel like I should know that, but honestly, again, uh, I have different types of gear and cameras and stuff that some are PAL and some are NTSC and a lot change that setting on your goggles. So usually goggles will receive both. So as far as actual, um, performance differences, I'm not totally sure. Uh, maybe somebody else in the chat has some information on that. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Looks like we got some troubleshooting going on in the chat as well. Fantastic. Troubleshooting is fun sometimes, but it can be rather troubling. <laughs> oh boy all right let's continue let's get let's do this because we got it we got to we're running out of time here a little bit but that's okay so all right we are done with the uh we are done with the pid tuning and next we're gonna go to the receiver the receiver tab or i, I said pid tuning the pid tuning tab but, but we didn't do any pid tuning tuning we just did the rate setup so here's the receiver uh, section now at this point um, I can actually we can plug a battery into our propless quadcopter and uh, and get our uh, radio connected to it so let me see here so first of all in here we have all of our different channels we have our roll pitch yaw throttle those are going to be our sticks on the on the radio and then we have aux 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is a lot of aux channels. And <clears throat> so uh, let's see. An important thing, what I'm going to do is the RSSI right here. RSSI. I'm go For my receiver, this will be vary depending on w which receiver you have. For my receiver, it is aux 12. I think it's aux 12 pretty sure it's aux 12 we'll find out and that's for the rssi so that is basically giving information to the flight controller about the signal strength the receiver what is it receiver signal strength indication i think that's what rssi stands for um and so that is helpful and we can get that information in the osd and that'll tell us how strong our signal strength is from our transmitter to our receiver which can be very helpful, so that way we don't all of a sudden fall out of the sky. RC smoothing, don't I don't use any of that. There's our another preview right there. RC deadband, uh, you can use deadband in case your sticks are jittery. If they're like moving a little bit, you'll see that here in the channel section. Stick low threshold, 1050 is fine. Stick center, that's fine. Stick high, that's fine. I have adjusted those in the past, but I'm not really sure if it makes a difference. So just leave it alone okay let's get our quadcopter right here we're still connected to let me see here let me go boom oh, wow all right so we have our quadcopter right here we're still connected to the uh, usb and we're going to plug in a battery and actually let me switch back to that so you can see the fun stuff oh wait 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 first thing first thing <clears throat> first thing we're going to get our transmitter this is the FlySky FS i6s comparison video between that and the i6x coming out soon as well. I promise it's coming. I wanted to I wanted to use this thing and make sure you know I, I got a good feel for it first. So I'm going to turn this on. I have already bound this transmitter to the uh, receiver, so that's all good to go. And so I'm going to connect the battery here. Again, the props are off. And there we go. And it just, did that just kick us out? Yeah, it just kicked us out. Well, that's fine. That is totally fine. So we're just gonna get back in here. Uh, we're gonna get back, we're gonna connect. We're gonna get back into here. Oh. We do got to do that thing. Okay, one more tip. If you have trouble connecting right here, so this, this your, uh, you, your, what do they call this thing? Your port, your, your, your modem port thing. Um, that, you might need to change that. But if you click connect and it doesn't work, you can't click on this thing while this thing is trying to, you can't click on the selection while this is trying to connect. So you have to click connect to make it stop connecting. 
and then you can click on something else like that one it's still not working is it that one okay is it that one okay is it that one okay cool all right and then what you can do is you can disconnect uh, I'm going to disconnect the USB cable and now I'm going to reconnect the USB cable see this just this is one of those things that happens sometimes it's like it's like why does it stop why isn't it working but it just isn't working all right let me do this let me disconnect the battery here i'm going to disconnect the usb cable reconnect the usb cable hey and now it works yay okay now i'm going to plug in the battery did I click save on that last one? I don't remember if I did. Or did I? Uh, okay, whatever. Okay, I'm going to plug in the battery. You'll see it shows the voltage is coming up there. So we are working with a four cell battery right there. It says 4S, 16.7 volts. So that's what that is. And you could compare that with like a volt or a, a, a voltage reader thing but i'm losing my words here the you can check the voltage with the voltage checker and then see how it compares to the beta flight voltage and to see if you need to adjust that so that would be one option <clears throat> flaco 85 asks can i add what is going on there stop that what's happening oh 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 Okay, all right, so right now it says we don't have a uh, connection to the receiver, which is interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, JRB, hey, how's it going, JRB? Thanks for hanging out. JRB says, nice video. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Let me uh, go back. Sorry, I lost my train of thought because my transmitter was uh being weird so let's go to receiver here we go receiver tab so you'll notice that i don't have any like we have a battery connected to the quadcopter but we don't have any wait do i need it no i put those down we don't have any connection uh on the screen nothing is happening so what we need to do is a, uh, a little bit of troubleshooting here uh so let me make sure that i have all of that correct it should be all correct now the only other thing is see it's giving me a question mark is that because it is plugged in no it shouldn't be that um so one way that i can tell whether or not the transmitter is actually talking to the quadcopter is by disconnecting the battery from the quadcopter and it does not make any change on my transmitter so what that means is that the transmitter is not even appears to be not bound with the receiver which is odd because i just I just did that. So let's try that again. Let me plug in. I'm going to plug in the battery here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing's, nothing's happening. Interesting. See, this is the kind of stuff that, 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 you, that you run into that happens. So it seems like... Um, let me let me you know what first thing i'm going to do i'm just going to try rebinding because maybe something weird happened and it it and it became unbound with the receiver i'm going to get a, a big pokey thingy Wabba. all right so what i'm going to do is uh let's see so we have a battery connected to our quadcopter what I will do here is I'm going to press the 
uh, press the binding button on the uh, receiver. If I can find it. It's in here somewhere. Uh. <laughs> See, this is this is real stuff, man. This is the type of stuff that you just have to that you just end up having to do. If I can, where is that little button? And I'll notice I'm using a wooden thingy, a wooden poker stick, instead of something metal, because my quadcopter is on. All right, where did that, where is it? Oh, there it is. I see you. Okay, I'm going to press that button and hold it. Uh, until the quadcopter starts blinking. Also, there may be a way of uh, putting it into bind mode through the CLI. I'm not sure. Let's see. Are we getting a blink? Are we? What's blinking? Uh, it's it is blinking blue. I think that'll work. All right. Now I got to get into my transmitter, and I'm going to go into the system settings. I'm sorry, I can't show you. I wish the camera was set up right. I'm going to click bind RX. Actually, I should have done that in the first place, because then you can just have this thing set to binding set into binding mode and then and then you can put your your receiver into binding mode let me see here okay so all right let's try this i'm going to disconnect from oh when in doubt just unplug everything i'm going to reconnect my battery to the quadcopter. I'm not connected to Betaflight. Now I'm going to press the bind button on my quadcopter receiver. And this should be working, but it appears to not be. for some reason. Okay, so again, this is, uh, I'm sure this is exciting stuff to watch, but if, you know, if that's what you gotta do, it's what you gotta do. Hmm. Hmm. Why would it be doing that? Why would you do this to me? Why me? Okay. Strange. Very strange. All right. Let's get let's get out of that. So this this should be everything should be working. Like I just flew this. Of course we. I mean we did flash the flight controller. But ooh that's toasty. Ooh toasty. That is toasty. Hmm. Oh, well, that's, no, that's understandable. We wouldn't have that. We wouldn't have the modes set up. Uh, let's, oh, no, not connect that. Let's not connect that. So uh, the reason why this seems strange or why this is odd is because there's not really any reason why that I can think of why it should have uh, disconnected uh, from or why it should have become unbound from the receiver uh, because that shouldn't really have anything to do with the actual uh, beta flight thing. So that is odd. Huh. So that, I don't think that's supposed to be flashing blue though. Why would that be flashing blue? Very strange. All right, I might have to, I might have to 
well, no, we kind of we sort of need that. We sort of need this working in order to do the next steps here. Uh, unless we'll just have to pick this up later, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it now. I want to finish it. I want to get this thing working. Mm hmm. That's strange. Okay, unless, unless I am mistaken, I should not be mistaken, unless I am wrong, and I am never wrong, uh, <laughs> I, I, I do not need to press the bind button while this is uh, while this is plugged in, because crossover RX was smarter than that, and they made that to be not the case unless something is pressing this. So we're doing some we're doing some real life troubleshooting here. So, um, I'm checking to see if maybe the, the bind button was being pressed or something was being pressed by like a zip tie, but that does not appear to be the case. And the other thing, so the other thing is, um, that a, when you have a receiver connected, like connection to your transmitter, that should be separate from the beta flight side of things so you can have your transmitter bound with your receiver and not have anything be working in beta flight um, but you you should be able to have it bound independently of beta flight so that's that's what i'm trying to figure out right here So it's possible that my it's possible that my receiver is just being weird on me for some reason. Mm, nope, that's not working. Well, let's just leave it like that. And what I'm trying to do is press the tiny little bind button, tiny little bind button on the uh, on the receiver here. And I should just be able to hold that and then have it blink. It should be blinking red. It's blinking blue. Wow. Well, that sort of threw a wrench in things, didn't it? Hmm. That is very strange. Uh... <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Um, I look like I know what I'm doing. So the let's get back in. Let's get back into beta flight here. Let's see what's going on. Let's see. Let's see if we can. Uh... Have this connect so it really shouldn't have anything to do with this but one thing that i'm going to do that which is probably what i would recommend somebody do if they ask me about this is i would say make sure that your correct port tab is used and that is correct that should be what i was using i am going to 
double check this against my uh, screenshots that I took of the original setup. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so that's normal. And then I'm going to go into the con eh, shouldn't be configuration tab. Oh, I mean, yeah, sorry, configuration tab. Serial receiver S bus. Okay, so that's normal. Again, this really shouldn't have anything to do with the binding aspect of it. PID tuning. No, there's nothing going on there. Uh, channel map is set to AETR123. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Uh, I see you guys are saying unplug the quad and turn off the controller at the same at the same time after blinking. Well, see, the, so the thing is, is that it's blinking like it's blinking blue, which may does that mean it's I, that might mean that it's an update mode, which it should not be an update mode. But if it's uh, it should be blinking red, and with this particular receiver. Yeah, that's so weird. I have not had that happen before. And with this particular receive, receiver, you should be able to just press the bind button after you turn it on, and then it should work. But um, this one is not for some reason. I have a loose connection or something? Why are you blinking? Why? Hmm. Shoot. Okay. All right, all right. So let me see here. Let me, because uh, we're going to have to either get this thing working or ditch it. For, a, for something else. Do I even have that? Yeah. Hmm. All right. What if I do this? Maybe I should turn this off. Let's turn that off. Let's plug this, or, un, or yeah, plug this back in. We're still good. A blue flashing light okay okay um let's let's let oh boy let's keep let's no well, because that would be 4.2 shucks shucks all right let me try i'm trying to figure out what what we want to do here because what i want to do is maybe i can do this without without having the transmitter connected. I really hate to do that. But when stuff doesn't work, it just doesn't work and you got to you got to work around stuff that doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? So, it, let's go. All right, so the receiver tab, the receiver tab, the modes tab. There's actually we're almost we're really kind of almost done anyway. Um so the receiver tab so anyway, so this w this would be where you would see your transmitter uh, in all of those channels right there. Um, and then and let me just go ahead and set this just for fun to aux 12 because that's what it that's what mine should be set to. I'll click save on that. And then um, and then in the modes tab, so basically that's it for the receiver tab. I mean, this is where you check and see that your your controls are doing what they're supposed to be doing and all that sort of stuff. On the modes tab, um, this is where you would actually set up the modes that correspond to the switches. Now, the switches, aux switches. So this is this is where in the in the receiver tab here you see uh, aux uh, aux one, aux two, all the way up to aux 14 i guess depending on how many uh how how many channels your receiver allows you to have um and so 
that is going to correspond, those aux channels is going to correspond to how you have your transmitter configured with the different switches on your transmitter. And I have, uh, I think, a, a, a couple different videos talking about aux switches and sort of how to set those up um, on like the i on the i6s and the i6x and possibly the i6 and so that is where those aux switches will show up let me see here <clears throat> what did i do with that all right let me take one more shot at getting this thing working if i can Cause it'll really it'll really improve the demonstration here I really will This is so difficult. Man. That's weird. That is weird, man. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get this quad trying to get this receiver working that's kind of a bummer too this is a good receiver this is the first time i've had this kind of problem with it or pretty much any kind of problem actually shucks shucks okay Okay, 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 new plan, new plan. We're gonna to go to the backup, going to the backup. Activating plan B. Okay, we have the Wizard X220. Um, this will be a different firmware, actually. I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna try and flash that firmware because I, I think everything should be working because really what I would just want to show you now is how to do is is what to like what to look for kind of how to set up the modes because this is actually this is actually a very vital vital part so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make sure that my uh, wizard let me just go ah, let me go over here to break this kind of up a little bit okay cool plan B we're gonna go back to the wizard uh, what I'm gonna first do is connect a battery to here props are off connect a battery Make sure that, uh, let's see, in order to bind this one, <clears throat> I do have to have the, the button held down, which is just awful, but I will do it. I will do it because we must, we must adapt and overcome and persevere and all those good things. Where are you button? This is the X6B receiver and it has a little button somewhere where are you who are you oh there it is okay i think that's the one all right so we'll go ahead and make sure this is bound this is bound no Bind. Yay! I think that means we're bound. Oh, check this out. Look, I put this light that was nor that was originally on the on the bottom. You can't see it too well because of that light, but it's it I it shines down on the board, so it like looks pretty cool. It lights up the board. I like it. it. Makes me happy. Okay, so we have we're using a different quadcopter now because the other one kind of pooped out on me for some reason. So does this work? What happens if I do this? Okay, I probably should not do that anyway. I don't think it'll matter. But 
Anyway, I'm going to connect the the wizard. So this is old, <clears throat> older firmware, older flight controller, different setup. Um, I'm getting some sort of a be incompatible with future versions of Mac OS. Contact the developer support. Uh, just FYI, this is the this is what I got. Uh, let me change this. This is the warning that I got. Legacy system extension, existing software on your system loaded a system extension, silicone. So that would be the driver, I think. Okay, I'm not sure what that means, but that's what showed up when I just plugged in my old F F F S P Racing F3 flight controller, right there. Just FYI. So let's see. Yeah, so it's using the Sil Lab uh, driver thing. Uh, yes. So let's just click connect and see what happens. All right, now let's go to the modes tab. Again, okay, now, or the receiver tab. Receiver tab. Now pretend, pretend that this was the same quadcopter. Uh, do we, yes, yes. Okay, good. All right, we have a connection here. Woo. I should have just done that like 20 minutes ago. Okay, so uh, what we have <clears throat> is i want to make sure I, I get to any of your questions if you have them nope i don't think so okay cool so all right we're back we're back everybody what we have now uh we have different quadcopter but let's pretend that it's the same one so here in the receiver tab we have the channel map that's important that's going to be for your uh brand of radio i believe or your receipt is it your, rec your receiver or your radio i i I make sure your channel map matches uh, and it'll be pretty easy to tell actually but yeah the, you have default which is what I have for fly sky and you have free sky and spectrum so my channel map is aileron elevator throttle rudder and it's one two three four and so that's what they're saying is the channel is one two th those are the channels for the for the roll pitch yaw and aileron uh, throttle sorry so that if in case you're wondering uh, in case you're wondering, that's why it says A E R T, because it's actually aileron elevator. No, I'm sorry. Wait, what? Roll. Oh shoot. Do I have that rudder? Sorry, rudder blanked out there. <laughs> rudder. <laughs> so it's using airplane terms. Just a fun fact. So you can see that when I move my sticks here, it is moving. Let's see. That's down. It's it's we're getting a corresponding movement on the screen and it's just for the roll and the pitch on this particular stick so <clears throat> whoops see i don't like that touch screen man you just touch the screen and then you don't know what's going to happen i don't like it so anyway uh so this is where we can check to make sure that all of our sticks are doing their full uh, full range so it's being a little choppy to me. I don't know if it's showing up on there, but we're just going to ignore that for now. So anyway, your stick should go from a, well, this one goes about 1030 to about 2009. The main thing is to make sure that it goes below the low stick threshold right there. And then it goes above the high stick threshold because otherwise you're not reaching the full potential for your uh for your, uh, uh your, your 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 settings basically like you're you're not actually you wouldn't actually be matching up your the physical movement with the uh the beta flight settings for how much power it's supposed to give the motors basically also i think this one here is where i changed it from the from the defaults again this is this one is actually running a super old beta flight uh 3.5.7 on this one but again we're going to just kind of pretend that we're using the same one the whole time because not much or anything has changed here i don't think uh again the rssi you would, you would put that however you need to in there and i'm going to have to unplug this and plug it back in because the escs start to beep after being left alone for like five minutes or something and now my transmitter is beeping and saying, hey, where'd they go? Okay. All right. So we're plugged in here. I think we're plugged in. Oh, now it's just telling me it has a low battery. I think. 
no, no. Now we don't have a connection because because of something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There we go. All right. If it doesn't work the first time, try it a second time. That's basically how it goes. Okay. So now what we're going to do is in the modes tab, this is, this is where the really important stuff happens. So the, you can see, I already have these set up again, because we're doing it like this, but let me, let me hide or can I, let's see, let me just, I'm just going to uh, get rid of all of these. I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, so then that way we can start fresh. Okay, cool. So again, this may look different in the newest version of Betaflight, but the, the basic idea here is in the modes tab for arming, we can click add range and then right here. So for arming, that's our arming switch that will allow us to basically activate the quadcopter. The motors will start spinning and it's, it's kind of like a safety switch. And so right here, the arming, we clicked add range and we got this thing right here and right where it says auto, that is where you select your aux channel. And so for me, I have it set for aux one. Now aux one is going to be the first channel after your, your four channels used up by the sticks. So in this transmitter, ah, it happened again. I touched the screen in this transmitter. Um, and, and the Flysky transmitters, they, uh, th you will set this, what channel the switches are supposed to correspond to. So I have my switches set up to channel, set up to channel five, channel six, channel seven, channel eight, like that. And so in beta flight, these will correspond to aux one, aux two, aux three, aux four, and aux five is somewhere. I guess there are, there are six aux channels, but those are the most important ones, those switches right there. So for our arming switch, I like to use uh, this one right here on where my first finger will sit, or my I guess my middle finger will sit because I use my I use the pinchy pinchy grip on the transmitter. So this one we're going to use for arming. So when I flip this switch, you can see this little this little tick mark moves right there. It moves when I flip the switch. Okay, so this way you can tell where you need to slide this little slider, this little bar, in order to activate the arming. So uh, in this case, uh, oh, actually, let me click, uh, let me click save right now because it, it's it's kind of working off of how I had it before. There we go. Okay, so that should show up like that. So I like it to arm in the up position. That makes sense to me because it's like you're flipping on a light switch. You turn it on, so you turn it up. So I'm going to slide the bar over here. It doesn't really matter how much extra there is as long as it doesn't overlap, you know, to the other side of where the tick mark is, which is all the way over there. That's that's so yeah. So the over here at the 2000 is the for me is the down position of the switch. And then the up position, excuse me, the up position is at 1000 like that. I guess I could just like go in and rotate the switches and that would change things. But that's how this comes uh, stock. Um, uh, Will says Mr. Murphy has joined the chat. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy has showed up. Um, and so that's so right. So that's what we want to do for our arming switch. That's how I like to do it. So it's really key to make that aux uh, to 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 match up the aux one, aux two, aux three, the the aux channels here with your aux switches and your channels on your transmitter. So that and that's also you can test it out by seeing the little tick mark. So that's how I'm going to have the arming switch. What I like to do for the ang I do use angle mode, which is auto level mode. And what I like to do is I like to have that on a three position switch right here, like so. <clears throat> and what that's going to be is, oh, it actually, it actually already showed up right here. Okay. As aux three. So you'd select that as aux three and you can see those three different positions. Now I want it to be an auto level 
when we're at the bottom position. So I'm going to drag this little bar down to uh, when the switch is all the way down to the 2000. And then um, <clears throat> when the switch is in the middle, I'm just going to leave that empty. And then since we're working on this switch, I will scroll down to air mode right here. Stop, stop, no, don't bleep, don't beep, don't beep. Oh, okay. I'm gonna scroll down to air mode right here and air mode, we're gonna click add range. And then uh, we're also gonna put that gonna, I say that a lot, gonna, we're, go we're going to, we are gonna, we're gonna or we're going to click aux three as well. So it's on our three position switch. But I only want this to be active when the, the switch is at the top position. So top position switch, that is going to be air mode. Center will just be default acro mode. And now that's beeping because I unplugged the quadcopter. Uh, it's just going to be default acro mode. And the reason why is because there are sometimes, I think, Although I find less and less times for this, but when you are using the the um, acro mode instead of air mode, because air mode can um, like if you if you land really hard, I actually haven't tested this in a while, so I could be wrong. But the idea was you land really hard, uh, you end up with a like a, a, a it bounces and it bumps a lot because in air mode the quadcopter is like actively resisting external inputs so if you smack the ground the quadcopter is gonna be like whoa that was you know bad so it will uh it will that's a dumb thing to say it was bad but basically it will cause it to like freak out and it might start like you know uh bump jumping up and down and and stuff i'm sorry i'm running out of words i've been talking for a while now so it'll basically it's bad it's bad because it can cause it to like get in, into this oscillation vibration thing. But if you have regular acro mode, the idea is that you won't have that problem. Now, uh, I just land super softly like all the time, but I don't know. I just, I just kind of have it. I just kind of have it out of habit. So to be honest, I don't know if this is a super great way of setting up, but that's just how I have it in case I want to use regular acro mode. Let me plug this back in so that way we can get our little tick tick marks back. Okay. Okay. All right. We're good. we're good here. So we that's it. That's it for our three position switch. One other thing that I want to set up is I want to set up if it where is it down here? Let's set up acro. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's set up acro trainer. Acro trainer. I actually have I haven't experimented with it too much because. I don't really need it, but this the idea is with Acro Trainer, if you are uh, new to flying in Acro mode, and Acro mode is where you have full control, uh, acrobatic mode, you can do flips, you can do rolls, um, and so that can be weird if you were used to flying auto level mode and then you go over to Acro mode, but Acro mode's the best, so you should learn how to fly in that. But the Acro Trainer, it will let you, um, it will work just like Acro mode, except it won't let you roll too much it won't it'll you know you can set the number of degrees but basically you can only roll so much or pitch so much and that's good because then it keeps you from like flipping over and then you're like oh no i'm upside down how do i get out of here and that sort of thing so it's it's essentially training wheels it's really what it is it's just like training wheels but for your quadcopter which that brings to mind a funny visual um so for training of uh, trainer mode we'll just put that on my far my far uh, right switch and we'll set it so that when it is up it is activated we'll drag that slider over there oh and because I have this set up before it's it's automatically putting it in but normally it would be set to auto right there and then we'd want to click that and set it to four I'm sorry wait did I say four yeah four aux four right so it happens to work out like that one more thing that I want to set up here well let's do two more things uh, I want to set up. I want to set up the beeper. That's one of them. So we'll put that. I think it's a uh, aux one, two, three, four, five. I think I have that on aux five. I don't know if a beeper is actually okay. I don't think this quad doesn't have a beeper. This doesn't have a beeper option. But if you had, if you had a beeper, 
you could put that on there as well. So that's that's one way of doing that. Um, but even more important than a beeper. Oh. Oh. Oh shoot. Okay. All right. We're gonna have to use our our imagination for this last one because. I forgot this this uh, this quadcopter is so old and the ESCs are so old that it it can't do turtle mode. It can't do flip over after crash mode. So um, that is what I would put on on my other quadcopter. And so I would just add I would just add it just like all of the rest of these. And I would put it on this particular switch right here. This one happens to be a three position switch, but I would just put it so that when the switch is all the way up, it allows me to do the flip over after crash mode. And what I like to do is I like to do, I put my arming switch on this side and my flip over after crash switch, which is kind of like an arming switch. It has to do with the, like the quadcopter turning on and off. I put that on this side of the, of the transmitter. And then I put my other switches, like my mode switches, that if I switch these, the quadcopter is not going to fall out of the sky. I put them on this side. So the idea is like I'll always know that my arming switch that will keep my quadcopter flying or not flying is all the way away from my mode switches. That's just kind of my theory there. But honestly, I could probably probably simplify things a little bit uh, more. In any case, when you're happy with how things are set up, you can just uh, go down to the bottom right corner and click Save. And my transmitter is telling me, hey, dummy, I'm out of batteries. You need to recharge me or recharge my batteries. So I think that... Is that it? I think, ah, oh, see, then this transmitter won't let me turn it off until I turn off, until I unplug the quadcopter. So that's kind of annoying. Oh, wait, let's do one more thing. One more thing I want to do here is, uh, eh, nah, we'll, wait, well, uh, let's set that right there. Okay, cool. All right, are we still having fun? Is everybody having fun? I'm having a great time. I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. I hope you learned maybe something from this. Hopefully something about beta flight, but I don't know. Uh, musician Patty or Patty. Patty. Hello. Hi, bro. That's what they said. So hello. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you're learning something today. Wolf says, I think air mode and acro mode are independent. So air mode off doesn't put the quad into acro. Um. Yes, uh, sort of. So it it actually is, uh, by default, your quadcopter is in acro mode. So that's why there is not actually an option to put the quadcopter in acro mode. There's just the option to put the quadcopter in angle mode or horizon mode, which nobody uses anymore. I, 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 that's a dumb mode, horizon mode. I used to use it, but I don't know what the point is of using it. So there's angle mode, there's horizon mode, and then there's... Um, air mode so by default that's why channel three here in the middle portion of channel three i leave it empty because or aux three i should say i leave it empty because uh by default the quadcopter will be in acro mode <clears throat> so uh and again air mode air mode i have a couple of videos explaining air mode but air mode is uh is i i like to think of it like it's like acro mode but with a little bit of extra, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's got sort of extra stabilization, if you will, to it. So that yeah, I would say so. So let's just go. Th let me just blast through the rest of these though to to be thorough. And I think I think we covered pretty much everything. So that's basically how I would set everything up. Again, we had to switch switch switch. We had to switch quadcopters midway through. Uh, to keep things rolling and I get that just shows man like I need to get some more quadcopter stuff you know what I'm saying because uh, uh, it's like going from either that one or like the super old f3 board quadcopter that's uh that's 
it's kind of it's well it is what it is so then we have adjustments i don't i honestly don't know how to use this i've never had to mess with it servos never had to mess with this because i don't use servos with beta flight motors here's the motors tab i actually i cannot show this one again i could show it on my other quadcopter well then we'd have to go out and do it anyway the, this will allow you to uh spool up your motor i say spool up but i mean like turn on your motors allow your motors to run and you, th this is a good way of testing your motors and the way that you do that is you say i understand the risks and then you can um, use these uh, sliders to increase the amount of in of the individual motor uh, and increase the increase the rpm or you can go over to the master switch and then bring them all up individually so this can be a good way of just testing like does this motor even work is it spinning well is there something wrong with it and so that is uh, useful for uh, troubleshooting and stuff. And then it also gives you your uh, your little diagram right there as well of the motors, which is cool. Sensors, we have sensors here. So this is used to, uh, get, this, is, this isn't really necessary for setting it up, but this is like if you're troubleshooting and you're like, oh, what's going on? Which, you know, which sensor is not working? So we have the gyroscope sensor here. You wanna make sure that like all three of these things are, are doing stuff because you have your X, Y, and Z axis. And then, um, and then your accelerometer, you want to make sure that stuff is working as well. Um, and that's, that's all the detail will go into that for now, but that's going to be used for troubleshooting tethered logging. I don't know what tethered logging is. I guess that's, I, I, I think it's when you tether your quadcopter and then you log it. I mean, you, you know, like you have a USB connected to it i guess for maybe data testing or motor testing i'm not sure I'm not sure but i've never had to use it and you won't either if you're just getting your quadcopter set up quadcopter black box black box is a way that you can store information on the quadcopter's flight controller sometimes with an external sd card uh, and that can be really useful for troubleshooting because you can uh, record information in your quadcopter oh, excuse me Oh my goodness. You can record information in your quadcopter and then you can bring it uh, to where can you bring it? You can activate mass storage device. Well, basically, it's been a while since I've done this, but basically, you can take that information and then use a uh, uh, black box, what do they call it, a black box viewer thing. Um, I think it's online. There's an online one that's good. Um, and you can get all this information about your quadcopter, which motors are spinning up, how much they're spinning, what your stick inputs were, your stick overlay. Uh, the overlay is especially helpful if you're doing like tutorial videos or something. Um, I feel like I, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, we don't even have, we don't even, all right, well, I'm switching that because I got to show you. We don't even have OSD on this thing. I forgot how, how old it is. Oh, my gosh. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> okay, let's, let me plug back in the, and actually, I, I have to troubleshoot this once we're done as well to actually get that thing flying again. <laughs> so that's okay. It was worth it. All right, let's plug this one back in. Now we're back to the budget basher so that we can actually show the uh, show some of these other features in here. And the main one is, uh, well, <clears throat> the OSD. Let's see, we already talked about motors. The OSD, um, I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but then we have the video transmitter. I actually have not messed with the video transmitter thing right here, uh, so I'm still learning about that one. So but basically... That's how you set up your video transmitter to do smart or to do smart audio. And what, what that is, is, is you can control your transmitter through stick commands. So like you can get into the beta flight menu in your on-screen display. So you're seeing it through your FPV goggles and you control it using the sticks on your transmitter. And so that, that's why it's called stick, stick commands. And so basically this allows you to change settings on your video transmitter, like your channel or your uh, power level through your transmitter, your, your radio transmitter, instead of your, um, uh, instead of like having to press the little buttons, which can be r real big pain. Uh, and that, that's it actually, the, every, we covered everything else. 
Oh, I, I, I just realized my head's in the way. Sorry. Okay. Ta-da! That's what's there. And then the CLI command, which is... Uh, I'll just put my head back there so it sort of stays out of the way. It's t totally in the way. Um, and then the CLI command. Let's click on that. So this is where you can actually sort of put in, like, code stuff, beta flight code cody things uh basically this can be good for like shortcuts and for again copy and pasting you know loading your um your your settings from a, a file so like i might do that actually because i did save the file of the 4.2 4.2.1 setup so i could like load from a file and then have all my settings in there and that would be safe because it's already it's it's the newer version that i that i took the settings from so all that said let's just go over to the osd and it just it, it'll also, it'll kick you out after you, you've been in the cli and then you try to click away it'll kick you out so we get back in here let's go over to osd and osd stands for on-screen display like i said and this get, it gives you a nice uh graphical uh little graphic here a little representation of what that looks like so uh you have all these different options here so you could like some people like the artificial horizon, which is, and then the sidebars, which is this stuff, those things. And that gives you, that tells you like what's level um, based on your, I think it's based on your accelerometer, uh, I believe. Uh, honestly, I like it's, I mean, I could take it or leave it. For the most part, if there's anything on the screen, like I'm just so focused on flying on the image in front of me that I don't even really notice stuff that's on the screen, which can be bad sometimes because sometimes that's how you, um, you know, burn down your batteries too much. Um, but yeah, so that's that that is um, important. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Wolves says arming your motors with the tabs also help you find also helps you find out what uh, what's the minimum RPM at which they run smoothly. That's a very good point, very good point. And also for the running smoothly, it's like a, that's a little bit more advanced. But in the uh, in the configuration tab right here where it says. Uh, motor idle throttle value sometimes you might need to change that depending on your motor setup um, that is the value in percent of the total power that your motors will start spinning at when you arm your quadcopter as it explains right there i think the percent of maximum throttle is sent to the ESCs when the throttle is at the minimum stick position <clears throat> oh and it gives a, it does give a little good explanation it says increase Increase it, increase it to gain more idle speed and avoid desyncs. That's when your motor goes like too slowly and then it freaks out, or too high and the craft feels floaty. Because then what happens is you take your throttle all the way out and your quadcopter might not fall like you 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 wanted to. Uh, it might not descend as quickly as you wanted it to. So that's why three percent is very low. You really just want to barely, you know, not barely be spinning, but just spinning just enough just the right amount and you can kind of play around with that just don't go too high because otherwise if you go to like 50 percent your quad's going to go Whoa! as soon as you arm it so anyway these are all of the different options that you have some of the ones that i've been playing around with is like uh you know some really important ones are like battery average cell which i like that uh, because it seems easier for me to like recognize when i have a low battery based on the on the like three point you know it's like if it's like 3.7 volts i'm like oh okay 3.7 like i can remember that better than if it's like i have a four cell battery and then it's like if it gets down to like what like four, 14 14 because some it's usually yeah i'm blanking out on the battery things right now but that's kind of my point is like it's harder it seems harder to remember because there's like a there's like a bigger range if you have the the full battery number, which would be right here, battery voltage. So that would show up. They, by the way, when you put these things on the OSD, they overlap each other. They all show up in the same center spot, and they overlap each other. So you have to click them and drag them, and um, 
anyway, so those are just some options there. Uh, you could have uh, the like you could have your um, what else? You know, you can have your craft name. I like that. And then you can drag this and put this in the correct spot wherever you want it on your OSD in your goggles. Do keep in mind that in your goggles, your goggles might like they might only show up to, depending on like the field of view and uh, how they're whether they're four by three or they're sixteen by nine format. They might show up differently, so. Just keep in mind, like, if, if you put everything, like, all the way down here, or, like, even lower, they mu it might not even show up in your goggle screen at all. And you're like, where's my OSD? I don't understand. But if you just bring this baby up here, and then you're like, oh, okay. So that usually what you can do, or what I'll do is I'll just um, turn the quadcopter on, have it powered, and then have my goggles on so I can see the OSD. And then uh, and it, and it has... Well, yeah, it has to be powered for the video transmitter. Um, and then you also, you'll notice, wait, what am I looking at here? Font manager, that font, display font. Okay, also you'll notice that, um, I forgot what I was gonna say there. You notice something. Uh, but yeah, that's that's important just to make sure that it actually shows up in your goggles also you can change the fonts and stuff but you have to have a battery connected uh otherwise it won't show up or something like that also you can do you can do i, I like to have rssi value as well because because we sort of set it up imagine that we that we actually set it up that it worked and that's also right there so that shows up it's quite small so kind of hard to see I'm still trying to figure out which font I like the most because you can change the fonts a little bit. You go to like large. I kind of like large because then it, well, it's large. It's kind of easier to see the stuff. I'm still playing around with that though. Throttle position, I like having that. And you can do stick overlays as well, which are kind of blocky. They're not that great. They're like this X and it just kind of, it. you don't get a lot of definition, but it kind of shows up. So I've been played around with that and I think you'll see that on some videos uh, of me just flying around soon <clears throat> uh, let's see oh wolf says uh, the the crosshairs help beginners go through gaps by lining up early found it very useful you know that's a good that's honestly a, a good question I mean or a good a good a good con thing to consider the so the Let's see. Now there is a there's a crosshair, right? Crosshairs. Oh, okay, okay. So not okay. So crosshairs. So that's a crosshair, as opposed to as opposed to the um the these guys, the artificial horizon sidebars, because those will move. The sidebars the sidebars tell you what angle you're pitched at, and then the the flat the one in the middle, the horizontal one tells you or no tells you where you're right am i right is it, does that make sense or does it do both anyway it will also tell you what how much you're rolled how much you're you're banked as well but i don't eh, i don't find it very helpful but the crosshairs that's an interesting idea so if you line up the crosshairs i guess you you know you need to have your goggles on your face as you're doing this to check and make sure that the crosshairs are in the very center of where your camera is centered. Um, I'm going to try that out. I'll, I will try that out and see if it, see if it works. Um, you know, that might also help. <clears throat> that might also help. Um, if you are like, you want to make sure that you're lined up just for like a cinematic shot, because sometimes I've found that, with with the quadcopter um you tend like it's it's easy to like kind of drift or do like an uncoordinated turn or kind of like be pointing towards something but like not actually like lined up like directly having the camera and the quadcopter centered on the object but you're still like flying towards the object you're kind of kind of skidding uh skidding towards it um 
kind of like an uncoordinated turn and stuff. But but I've been practicing. Or I'm going to be practicing more like cinematic whoop, cin cine whoop style filming because it's just so awesome. Like I would I would love to do that uh, to you know like for money. Like if people because that seems to be very popular and it seems to be also like it's really popular. Like it's I mean it's gaining popularity, but it's also it's not mainstream. And it does actually take skill to do that stuff. Like it takes piloting skill and it's not just like, oh, I have a, I have a, you know, a DJI Mavic and I can fly over this thing. Wow. Oh, look at that. But when you're like flying through gaps and you're doing, going, doing dives, whoo, man, that's some, that's some skill. And I want to get better, um, at that for sure. And probably we'd want to get something other than this thing right here. Cause this is like a, a big freestyle quadcopter and that's probably a good note to anybody who's looking to get something like who wants to do that type of uh filming flying and stuff don't get an fpv freestyle quad or racing quad you want like a dedicated cinematic you know cine whoop thing anyway when you're done with your osd make sure you go down to the bottom right hand corner and click save and i think that's it I I think let me see oh Luca says put the low voltage warning in the middle of the OSD screen thing yeah that's a good point so the low voltage warning so that would be definitely why you would want to make sure that your your voltage up here well the battery's not plugged in right now but make sure that Betaflight is reading your voltage correctly because you don't want it to give you a low voltage warning unless you really want it to give you a low voltage warning because if it's giving you a low voltage warning when you you're only halfway done flying like half you know halfway half of what you deem acceptable to be draining from the battery then that's not going to be any uh good for you basically so uh so that is that's a good point though and yeah definitely putting that like right in front of your face would be pretty important uh to make sure you can actually see it that yeah definitely uh i see you guys are asking about a discord server uh for subscribers um i don't i don't have any discord things and i don't know i don't know if i want to do that like what is there is there a what's the advantage to to a discord thing like a, a server thing i know i mean i know it's like you can like chat and stuff but it just it just seems like there are so many discord servers already um and like forums and stuff that i don't know i mean i it i guess it, it probably i could set one up probably it wouldn't probably wouldn't take a whole a whole lot of effort uh to do that um but yeah i mean if if a bunch of people are interested that could be a thing that could be a thing um <clears throat> Wolf says timer. Uh, you want the timer to start when you arm. It's a rough check if you don't have a calibrated battery voltage. Uh, right. So the timer. Yeah, that is a good point. I should probably mention that as well, because that's the thing. On the one hand, I want to like I want to have a lot of different uh, data that I can reference on the screen, but I don't want to just have a bunch of crap everywhere and totally, you know, clog up my screen. So you know i i i'm still working on like how minimalistic i want this to be but i think a timer would be a good thing because i usually do total armed time is what i do that seems to be the best way of kind of um determining whether you're flying uh or, or how much time spent like flying or the kind of the batteries is is you know sucking more uh juice or the motors are sucking more juice so that seems to be pretty good i do put total armed time right there and then as far as the layout i'm still trying to figure it out i'm still working on that i think i'm thinking about putting like the the battery voltage i don't know if i want both battery voltages or not it's nice having the full amount of volts later as a reference to see like what size battery i was using but it's probably not that big of a deal and i feel like having the three point you know whatever voltage right there in the middle would probably be the best uh reference i feel like possibly um yeah could be all right so the uh luca says on discord everyone helps everyone else well yeah i mean that is kind of a 
It's kind of like a forum. I don't know. Is it like a forum? I mean, I've been on some of the Discord stuff. I don't really hang out around forums because I don't really like forums um, because they're just so just th- things just go downhill so fast uh, in forums. <laughs> uh, so, so I wouldn't, wouldn't really want to do something. Uh, wouldn't really want to do something like that. Um, Anish, Anish Patil, uh, APM 2.8 video. No, that's probably not going to happen. I'm not familiar with the APM 2.8 uh, stuff. I, I looked into that a little bit. I think it's like larger quadcopter stuff right with like gps and everything probably not going to happen I'm not really interested in that stuff right now um and then as far as the eashin camera you're talking about uh leave a leave a link in because you can't put links in the chat but leave a link in the um leave a comment with a link to that so that i or somebody else can like check it out and and let you know what we think about it so uh, you could do that, uh, like after this goes live, or just or just one of my videos or something, and I'll I'll probably see it. So that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, Wolf says keep the battery voltage where you have it on your phone so that your eyes automatically go there. You know, um, yeah, I don't know, like because what you're talking about, I guess on a phone, generally on a phone, it's like up there course that might not fit in your actual video screen if it's all the way up there but you know what i'm saying so up right up there <clears throat> yeah that could be okay but you know what i've noticed now i fly 16 by 9 i fly like the the wide wide screen style and what i've noticed is like i actually it's very difficult to look up here and that that actually seems kind of odd because well it de- kind of depends on how fast you're flying because if you're flying really fast, then you might be looking a little bit more up ahead so you can see things up ahead. But if you're flying more slowly, you might be looking more down in this region because you're trying to capture things like closer to you. So I find what I'm finding is that if I have to, if I have to move my eyes all the way over there, like it's a lot like that's actually it's actually um, difficult to go from the center of the screen to over here but that's also because i'm using these fat shark box goggles fat shark fat shark scout i'm using the scouts and i don't know I'm, i like them but i am i am kind of open to something else now um in any case it's a very large you really can't tell like from here but it's a very large field of view and so really i have to move my eyes like a lot to go from the center to like the side to where like I can't actually f- even focus on that. Now, if you have like the like a uh, um, like the you know the traditional fat shark style goggles, and you, you're maybe I think racers tend to like those more, where it's like a four by four by three format. So like, is it four by three? It's basically a square. Is it a rectangle or a square? In any case, like as it shows here in, in beta flight, where it's like a basically a square. I guess the idea is like you have less field of view, so it's not as immersive experience, but you can see everything more easily. So your eyes don't have to go all the way over here to over there to over there. You just it's like you can pretty much have it all in your field field of view at one time. So I could see how that would how that would make sense i'd have to try i'd have to try that out but i'm still going to play around with with having stuff because here's the other thing the more information the more data you have on here like oh i want my throttle position i want my stick positions i want my craft name i want all this stuff the thing is the more stuff you have on there the the harder it is to actually focus on the really important stuff like battery voltage rssi um i mean really i was thinking like those are probably the two most important things because you know this this tells you how much your how long your quadcopter can fly for like before it falls out of the sky based on the battery voltage or not how long but like how you're doing in, in terms of that and then also your rssi because if you don't have rssi and you don't have volts then you're not flying buddy you're gonna fail safe or just crash and that won't be fun so that's kind of what i'm thinking about those in terms of keeping them as uh as 
obvious as possible as obvious as possible as prominent as prominent as as possible sam walls says hey love the vids just wondering what's recommended to reduce prop wash cheers thanks sam appreciate you thanks for hanging out uh what is recommended to reduce prop wash well i guess um there are many things i think I think if you're talking about in terms of prop wash, we're kind of getting, okay, I tell you what, let me just do this. So that does it for how to set up beta flight. Uh, as a beginner, we covered pretty much everything here. We had to do a little bit of switcheroo with the quadcopters due to technical difficulties, but that is pretty much how it goes. If you have questions about that, let me know in the chat or in the comments. If you watch this uh, video this far, uh, which is amazing uh, if you're watching this recorded that's super cool thanks for joining me and now we're going to kind of go into like a little section here where we're just going to kind of talk about stuff as we were but now i just made it more official so uh what is a good way of reducing the prop wash well i don't i don't have i don't know i don't have a, like a specific tried and true answer but what i have heard of is like adjusting doing some different adjustments with the pid tuning stuff so changing your pids that could have an effect maybe different propellers could have an effect um the type of quadcopter will be affected by that differently also how much it weighs uh if we're talking if we're talking about like like your prop wash in the sense of wait where, let me just get ah eh, so many things and if we're talking about prop wash like in the sense of like where you're you're catching yourself sort of or you're you know you're doing some kind of move and your quadcopter's falling and you're sort of arresting your fall and then you kind of get this like vibrationy thing um i i kind of think that a lot of that it it just depends like it comes down to you can avoid it by flying differently to some extent i'm not saying every situation but i really do think that if if you're like you say if you're talking about trying to do like smooth freestyle moves you can do stuff so that you don't get like prop wash when you stop you but you just gotta you gotta kind of maneuver the quad right and you gotta kind of come to a slow stop instead of trying to be like and just you know falling into your own turbulence that's that's what the prop wash actually is so that's uh, that's what I would say. I don't know if there's any really super great way um, or, or any one particular way. So that's what I'm thinking. That is what I'm thinking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've had a fantastic time, even with all of the technical difficulties. And now we're going to bring this to a close. So hopefully this was educational for you folks and hopefully you learned something if you did let me know thanks for hanging out with me everybody i appreciate you guys and uh i will see you again very soon